So I'm going to go through some like general how do you do it type stuff to start. So, you know, ask any questions you have. One thing I found out playing this the first time is that this game really, really utilizes triggered actions. And so you're going to be like spending a lot of your time watching for the triggered actions that your character has to trigger, basically. And each of these characters, if you zoom in on a character and you all have access to all these characters, so any one of you can click on any of the tokens, make sure, first of all, that you go to the uh, top right of the screen, you hover over the thing that looks like a gear that says my settings when you hover over it up above all the chat, then go to personalization and display. And then make sure you have unchecked the box by alphabetically sort token actions. So if you uncheck that, then the token actions will appear across the screen in the following order. You'll have on the left side, some initiative buttons, and we'll come back to what those do. Then you have a button that's just kind of your general characteristics as far as your hit points, the H60, for example, on the tactician, they have 60 hit points. B is bloodied, they're bloodied at 30. R is recoveries, they have 10 recoveries. And every recovery they span, they heal 20 points. They have a speed of six. They have a size of one. All of you have a size of one. That means you're one square by one square. I think all, all of you have a weight of four. That'll come into play if things try to toss you or grab you or move you, etc. I think you all have a reach of one. And if you have a grapple score listed, it's basically seven plus your might score. And then it'll also list what your heroic resource is and this is something you'll be tracking all game so if you click on your token the top right field is a gray field gray circle and it should have a zero in it to start you want to use that field to track your heroic resources which will come and go during during the adventure for example on the tactician you guys can all click his h60 uh, token button and it'll whisper to you uh, some information you'll see all the same information that's on the button plus some more stuff about his heroic resource of focus. And all of your heroic resources are a little bit different. So on the character you're playing, click that same button to see what your, your information has. For example, on the tactician though, they have a heroic resource called focus. At the start of a battle, they'll begin with a number equal to how many victories they have. Basically every encounter or most encounters will grant you a victory. So the longer we play, the more heroic resource you'll start with in the later encounters. The start of every one of their turns, they gain one. Every time they use the signature attack, they gain one. Every time they use the, they seize the opening power, they gain one. And then when the battle ends, they lose all their heroic resources. Then you'll see the next button over is their characteristics and their skills. So if the tactician, for example, has a might of three, agility of one, endurance of two, reason of three, intuition of one, presence of two, and skills. And if you click that button, it'll do a test roll for you. So you click that. Uh, the test roll is rolling 2d6 in that left-hand field where you see the number 8 that I just rolled. And you'll use that button for any test. So if I tell you to do a agility test, hit that button. Reason test, hit that button. Uh, presence test, hit that button. Because you'll just basically look up above. If you roll a base 8, for example, and it's a might test, then I'd add the 3 for might to get a total of 11. Then you'll see three more numbers to the right there. These are if you have any banes or boons. That's kind of like an advantage and disadvantage, except that it stacks. You can have multiple advantages or multiple disadvantages, multiple banes, multiple boons. <clears throat> they offset one for one, so you'll never have both, but you could have more than one of each. That, then next comes your description, and then your gear, and then your class and race features. Those don't really do any actions for you, but the next thing that you want to look at across the top are all your triggered actions. And there's two types of triggered actions. The one that ends with a capital T on the tactician, it's their parry action. You can do that triggered action one time per round, not per your turn, per round, and it resets at the top of a round. So if you haven't used it as you're coming to the very last part of the round, you definitely want to think about trying to use that. And every one of you have a, a triggered resource that's pretty powerful. Hopefully you'll be using them every round. Then the ones that are lowercase t's, like on the tactician, it's chance and grounded and VP stands for victory plan victory plan damage and victory plan move, those all don't count against your triggers. It is a trigger, but it doesn't count against the one you can use. Now, some of them you can use over and over when the opportunity presents itself, like chance hits you can do over and over. Uh, grounded for the tactician is every time they get force moved, it's reduced by one. Victory plan damage for the tactician. These victory plans are special in that you can do those only once per encounter and only one of them per round. So you can do them both in an encounter, but only one of them on any given round. 
and they get more powerful the later in the adventure you go. So the more victories you have, the more powerful those are going to be. I should stop there and see if anyone has any questions so far. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So watch. I mean, you know, click all your click all those. Watch all those. Little tip is you can hold down the shift key and double click on one of those, and it'll show you the actual uh, formatting of that macro. So you can read kind of what it does without actually triggering it if you want to. And the top right of that screen, you can hit the X and it closes that screen. Okay, then comes your maneuvers. So on every round, on every one, you get one turn per round and on your turn, you can do one maneuver and one action. And you can trade your action for a second maneuver. So you can do two maneuvers instead of a maneuver and an action. You also have a few maneuvers that are free maneuvers. Uh, and taunt on the tactician is one, the lowercase m is for free maneuver. But oftentimes those come with a restriction like once per turn or something like that. They don't count against your maneuver you get. I should click on this real quick for you. The action economy in this game, in your turn you get an action and maneuver plus any free triggers or free maneuvers you can that you have. Uh, you get a trigger once per round plus any free triggers you have. You can split your movement. If you have movement that comes with your maneuver, it's a straight move. Your speed is one maneuver. You can split that before or after your action. Then one other cool thing you can do with your movement or whatever movement you get from a maneuver is instead of just moving normally, you can actually you can actually shift. Um, you can cut your speed in half and shift, and that does not grant anyone whose reach you leave a chance attack. So that's the way to get it out of a fight without getting a chance attack on you. You shift away. You gotta only use half your speed to do that. If you move away at your normal speed, then anyone who's reached you leave, they get to take a chance attack on you. Okay, so that's uh, maneuvers. And then you have, after the maneuvers, are your actions. And for the, uh, every class has a basic attack. This is the kind of thing you would do at the end of a charge, or if someone grants you to take a basic attack, or you can just do it anyway if you want to do a basic attack. But basically, they don't normally have any kind of extra effect with them. So this um, tactician's basic attack, a precise attack, they have a range of four with it because the tactician is actually armed, if you look in their gear, with uh, javelins. So they can do their, their precise attack at range four. There's some keywords there that might come in with like immunities or resistances. It's going to attack a creature or an object. It's going to do 2d6 plus five damage. The 2d6 is rolled separately for the damage from the extra, extra, the extra modifiers because if you get an 11 or 12 total on the 2d6, you get a critical hit. And a critical hit lets you take one more action, which you can also down, downgrade to maneuver. One more action or one more maneuver on that your turn. I think you can only do it once per turn, though you can't do it again if you get crit again. And then again, Bane or Boon dice are there optionally if, it, if they need to be used. Damage is not normally typed. You can see there's no definition of damage there, but some things do typed damage. And if they do, they'll be listed. So the talent has um, Dagger of the Mind, which does psychic damage and it'll be listed there, otherwise it's untyped. Um, okay, so the B at the end there is for a basic attack on the tactician. There's an S at the end of some of your things, that's a signature attack or signature stratagem. Sometimes they do special things, or sometimes you have a power that grants you the ability to use one of them, or sometimes your heroic resource builds when you use them. So in general, they're better than basic attacks. And then you have finally some things that go off your heroic resource, and you actually have to spend for the tactician, for example, his focus to do an inspiring attack, um, he would have to spend three of his focus. And it's going to do some extra cool effects, like this one does a hero within five of them can recover. And then hammer and anvil is another one. And this is where a basic attack shows up. An ally in 10 of him can target that same creature with a basic attack. Then. So that is it. Any questions on that? Um, could you explain charge? Yeah, so you have actions, and attack is an action, so you don't move at all, you just make an attack. Charge, you move your speed in a straight line, so you could move as a maneuver, and then charge, and basically move your speed again as long as it's in a straight line towards your target, and then at the end, you can make a basic attack, which would be your precise attack for the tactician. Now, this is how initiative is going to, we're going to do initiative here. So initiative goes basically back and forth between your enemies and your group group of characters. And what I want you to do is figure out what you want to do in a round, what action, what maneuver you want to do. Once you kind of have your plan formulated, then I want you to hit an initiative button. So if we're in a fight and 
say some enemy's gone or I'm doing some enemy's action, and you decide, hey, I, I'm ready to go. I know what I'm going to do. Hit the initiative one button. will tell me that you're ready to go, but you don't care what order you go in. If you hit the initiative two button, that tells me you're ready to go and you want to go next. And if there's multiple people with initiative twos, when I get to the next person in the initiative, then we'll have a discussion who wants to go first. And hit the initiative zero button if you are ready, but you definitely want to go as late as you can. And you can change this at any time. So if, you know, early in the fight, you're playing the high elf talent, I know what I'm going to do, initiative one, so I'll come in whenever, you know, whenever. I don't care if it's right away. But then all of a sudden, a grouping of monsters gets in a three by three group and you want to use your flaying attack. You can just click the initiative two. So you can change this initiative back and forth at any time. So again, two, you want to go right away. You're ready and you want to go right away. One, you're ready, don't care when you go. And zero, you're ready, you want to go last. Any questions on how that works? No, but hey, Tom, I sorry, I've been looking at my character sheet and my tokens while you've been talking. I've been I have been listening, but uh I noticed a couple things that were different on my token from my character sheet. Which should I be going off of? Uh, what's what's one thing, for example? Uh, for example, you have recovery 10, and the character sheet PDF that you had linked has recovery 11 for the okay. conduit. No, you're right. Uh, so we'll just fix that. We'll go with the character sheet. Okay, and then the other thing is uh, the victory benefits. You have that as a small T, which if I remember right, was like you, it, anytime it triggers multiple times. But on the character sheet, it says you gain each of the following benefits once per encounter, but can only but can use only one per turn. Right. So, so the difference that make that a big key. The difference there is um, yep. the small T's means it does not count toward your one trigger use. It might be limited to only one time per round, but for example, on the conduit, you could do a holy infusion and okay. do a victory point resist. Oh, and, I see what you're saying. And do a chance attack. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So okay, the chance okay. attacks can happen over and over, don't count. Victory point only one time, doesn't count. Um, only infusion, only one time, and it uses up your trigger. Uh, I, I'm tracking now. I'm glad I asked that. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, okay. Any questions before we begin? That should cover us. I'm going to zoom you down to where your characters are. Start of the adventure here. And if you could, everyone just click initiative one for me. I just want to make sure all the initiative buttons are working for all those, all those tokens. We go they're all working very good okay um let's see you guys have all played with me before except paul paul do you have any questions at all before we start uh, nope. nope i might have some later but right now okay. i'm good okay so the adventure starts um basically the main uh point of you guys coming to this tower out in the marshes is that someone is taking it over and a previous group has been sent here to investigate and they have not been heard from again so you're standing outside the tower it's called the Tower of Coins and Swords, and it's an abandoned mage's tower. And you came from the town of Sealton Heath. You were sent here by the town's leader, Lady Rana. She previously sent three sages, and their names are Darrow and Willet and Moira. So you want to try and find those sages and find out what's going on in this tower. The tower has been sitting basically a ruin for a hundred years. When all of a sudden, um, the tower's kind of come to life. Um, you can hear, when you get close to it, you look up above the twisted trees, you can see this tower rising 150 feet into the sky. Um, you can hear the sound of whirring gears audible from within as the clock's faces light up in shifting hues of orange and purple and blue and yellow and green. And there are a set of double doors right in front of you that are closed. The tower looks to be almost 100 feet across and square. So you here you are, standing in the marsh. What do you guys want to do? We'll start with... Um, Shadow. Shadow, what do you want to do here? We we see one entrance, more yeah. than one entrance. One one entrance, a set of double doors right in front of where you're standing, basically. Well, let's go up and open the door. Okay. Everyone else can go to where you want to be when Shadow's moving up to open the door. Shadow, when you go to open the door, you find that it is probably barred from the inside. You can try and break it open with sheer force. You can check it out, see if there's any way you can get that bar off of there, or whatever else you want to do. Well, what let's see if there's any way out. Go ahead and make disable though. Yeah, go ahead and make a um, reason notice check. So you click shadow. You're going to click your button that has all your characteristics on it, and it'll make a reason shadow a reason uh, notice test for. You. Nope, I picked the wrong person. There we go. Is that is that the button? No, that's not the button. This one is. Here we go. There you go. So you rolled a seven on two d six. You get to add your characteristic of reason, which is three. So you're up to ten. 
and you're not trained in notice, so 10 is it. So with the 10, looking at these doors, you note a couple things. You note that there's a thin seam where the doors meet, wide enough to admit a bladed weapon, which you carry, such as a sword or a dagger. You further note that there's multiple tiny holes carved into the door. Each hole contains a spring-loaded mm -hmm. needle. While you're looking at that, um, would anyone else like to do anything? We'll start with the tactician. Uh, well, now that we know about the uh, trap, um, would I be able to disable it somehow? Yeah, we can get to that so you can help the shadow. Uh, the talent. What's the talent do? I'm looking around the side of the building to see if there's any other entrances. Okay, make a uh, test for me. This is going to be your intuition notice. I'm going to roll a test roll. So you click your token, click that big long button that starts with M1 for your character. That's all your characteristics and your skills. There you go. So you rolled a 9 on 2d6. You get to add your intuition of 2. So you're up to 9, 10, 11. And you're not trained in notice. So 11 is your total. So with an 11, looking around the tower, you note some additional features beyond the obvious. One is that about 125 feet up the tower, which is 150 feet total in height, you see a few windows. They look like they're all barred shut. You also notice ravens occasionally flying out of one of the windows. It's on the east side of the building, so basically when you come around the corner of the building, you see just north of you, just on the east side of the building, an open window 125 feet up. And then finally, you notice, with your 11, um, you notice lightning. Tiny bolts of blue lightning are occasionally racing down the tower's outside walls. So you're looking for that stuff. And then Fury, what are you doing? Uh, that's URL. I'm reading myself to Panther. Um, so uh, Panther is searching the other side, but I guess that okay. check was for the whole circumference? Or yeah, was that but you can make a side? test as well in case you get a better uh, total than um, the talent did. Yeah, I, I, get, I guess I won't be looking up. I'll be looking down to see around the, like, the edge of the wall if the ground okay. looks soft or like there might be a stoop or something. Okay, make a test. Mm, you don't see any more than the talent did. And finally, the conduit. Uh, so the conduit um, is tr uh, was a, a blacksmith before uh, following the answer of his god. Is he able to use his blacksmithing uh, skill to determine whether there's a way to, I guess, take the door off without triggering the trap, looking at the hinges and whatnot? Yeah, you could do a, um, a might carpentry check to do that. Or uh, Shadow, you can do a agility skullduggery to like disable the trap, or a might skullduggery to lift the bar through the slit, and um, the tactician could help one or either one of you with those checks. Tactician. Well, I'm not a carpenter. I was I was focusing more on like the hinges. You're a blacksmith, black. yeah, yeah. So well, I think what what we need to do is have unless somebody thinks they can climb up to that entrance up above i think we need to have shadow try and block those dart things and uh okay disable the trap that way well somebody else tries to lift the bar by sticking their blade to the let's do the gap. disarm check first and with that disarm check um let's see here maneuver to help assist ally in five plus one boon next attack for single target or next test within the target's next turn so you can get an assist from the tactician and go ahead and make a agility skull dug read test. So click that test button. So you got a five on the roll. Your agility is three, so you're up to eight. You got a boon on skull duggery, so nine, ten, and a assist for fourteen. And a fourteen, you're able to disable the trap. No problem. Now the tactician to lift the bar, you would have to make a might skull duggery test, and uh, the rogue can help you. Oh yeah. Bar oh, yeah. is lifted, doors are open, Sweet. traps are disarmed, and you can see into the first room. So, Josh, is your name Priest? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a good mnemonic. Uh, Ryan, yeah. is your name Tactician? Sure is. Tactician okay. Johnson. Okay. Fair <laughs> the enough. entrance hall. So, sweltering heat radiates from a furnace that bears a monstrous golden face on each of its sides. The moths are gaping wide open, displaying fire within the furnace. There's a stairway starting on your right that circles and ascends all the way up into the ceiling about 25 feet over your head and then through uh, the massive gears slowly clicking together that form the ceiling overhead. So, uh, Shadow, what do you want to do? Uh, well, first of all, I want to have a sidebar 
did these awesome maps come with the adventure or they did nice okay yep. and we don't see anybody in this joint no one's huh? in the room nope you are alone oh hey i'm sorry i'm going to have to be right back my i have a kid who's upset okay shadow what do you want to do well i'm going to slip in and circle around the side okay waving for my friends to come and follow uh, the stairs are to the right uh tactician what do you want to do i assume you're going for the stairs right uh, oh, I, those are the. That's not the, the bottom, bottom of the, the stairs. Right. That's yeah, the, the top. The right. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, tactician. The tactician will head over to the stairs. Okay, Fury, and then Talent, uh, Paul. Everyone following. We'll assume the conduit follows as well, and you guys can walk on up the stairs to the second level. Um, how far ahead of the can group? I, can, before we go all the way up the stairs, can I? I just want to observe this furnace. In these faces and see if there's anything magical about it or you bet anyone who's trained thing? in clockwork devices uh which a couple of you oh, are that's me can make a test so if you have a knowledge clockwork go ahead and make a test that'd be a kn dash yep. cw back we're making a knowledge clockwork test if you happen to have knowledge clockwork i do not okay that's a eight nine ten eleven and you got clockwork well, okay, so the talent notes, um, this big furnace, it is not tied in any way to any of the other devices in the tower, you know, like the clocks or anything like that. There's no gears coming out of it. Um, it stands alone here. Uh, he's not real, you're not real sure of the function it would serve. As you climb up the stairs a little bit, you can get a view of the top of it. You can see the top of the furnace is actually made out of glass, probably a very thick glass. And any of you trained in blacksmith can make Ooh, a cool. test for uh, reason craft blacksmith okay conduit this is reason so you have to eight plus four so you're up to 12 for your blacksmith check um the furnace class is the first top is glass there's a massive iron fan inside stirring up a raging inferno within it and uh, that fan can blow the fire out or suck it in depending on the direction the fan is blowing and the speed it's blowing at Right now, it's blowing to suck fire in. That's maybe why there's no fire blowing into the room as you guys were passing by. And it's going at a, a fairly good clip. You uh, think maybe if you got close enough to one of those mouths, it might try to suck you in. Um, so that's what you observe from looking at the top of it. You guys want to stay in this room or move on? I think move. Okay. Um, so we can kind of, we can feel that airflow, can we? Like Yeah, you can feel the air flowing in, in, into the furnace yeah. through the mouths, yeah. Okay. okay, give me a marching order coming up the steps. So I'm moving you over to the left side of the screen over here. Just want to know what your march order is in general going on stairs. So you're, you're traveling toward the bottom of the screen. I'm good where I am. Seems okay. Okay. Let's spread out a little bit. Yes, all right. Yeah. All right. Lightning formation. Perfect. Sure. So I'm moving you to another map, and I'm putting you to just as you come up above the gears. So like I said, the... The uh, ceiling is made up of gears that are locked together, and as you just peek up above them, coming up the stairs, you see the next chamber. Inside this really big chamber are some kobolds, and you guys are over. So the stairs here climb to the right, or hug the wall, and circle all the way around. And in the chamber, you can see the floor of the level is made up of massive gears, all of which are slowly chunking into place and interlaced with each other. As they do, massive counterweights connected to a great shining spinning gear above up, up and down. So the ceiling up above is another great shining spinning gear, 25 feet up. Um, each of the numbers on the screen that you can see, the main gear is basically at the general floor level. And then other gears are 5 feet down if they're minus 1, or 5 feet up if they're plus 1, etc. But as you come up, basically where the um, where this is at, Right here. Oh, I should move it. So you actually came here. As soon as you get to these three squares, one each to the right of shadow, you're at minus one level. Basically, you're at the level of this first gear here. And you could step off the stairs and jump onto that gear if you wanted to. And when you get there, you can see the kobolds in the chamber. And the kobolds, small scaled warriors who look like a cross between a person and a dragon, are patrolling the gears and immediately attack you upon your appearance. So, like I said, Figure out what you want to do with your action. We're going to be alternating initiative back and forth. I'm going to roll to see who goes first here. Hi goes to the party. So you guys are going to get to go first. So one of you can take the very first action. So once you figure out what you want to do, if you want to go first, hit initiative two. 
you don't care, hit initiative one. And if you <clears throat> if you know what you want to do and you want to go last, hit initiative zero. And I should take you off of there since you haven't had the chance. I should have not had you on there to start. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Click your initial button when you're ready. I'll give it a second in case anyone thinks of a two. Okay, no twos coming. Tactician, you'll go first. So you could run okay. due north, basically, and not change elevation until you get to this square here, in which case you have to go up one square. So it'd be just, um, well, that's a running jump, a running high jump. So it's no additional squares of movement. You just can go straight without counting extra squares. Okay, so could the tactician go, and I, I can move through allies, right? You can, and it's not difficult terrain to move through allies. Okay, so if I go, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, tactician speed is six. Oh, dang it. That's right. I played the talent last time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll move to there. And okay, real quick. Someone's going to do a triggered action on you. Uh, you come here. Enemy in three of you moves or starts to turn adjacent. You pull the enemy three. So he's going to pull you, this kobold, to your east. and pull you adjacent to him. Okay. Um, well, then I'll attack him instead. Okay. And I'll do, uh, I'll do uh, positioning strike. If I could. So if I do my triggered and do my holy infusion, do I do it now? Yes. Yeah. As soon as he is announcing he's making an attack, you do it. And so okay. now and he he's going to get an extra boon. boon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's 13, 14 points damage with boon added in. And hero and Tenge can shift three and you gain a focus. Excellent. And remember, and you need to focus at the start of your turn, too, so you should be up to actually two focus after that. Okay, and I'll give that, or do I have to choose who gets the Ally turn? and Tin, yeah, you pick them. Um, I'll say uh, the Fury. Fury, you can shift two. What else, Tactician? That will, oh, uh, Taunt. Um, okay. The guy next to me. Guy right, right next to you? Yeah. All right. He will be taunted, and he'll go next to the initiative. And, and he will go ahead and... Do a Gladius stab. No, he'll do a shield bash on you. So this is going to do 14 points of damage to you. Now here's wow. where like the talent can do a trigger. Um, yep. Yeah. So Always my click. telekinetic shield goes up. All right, click that button. And a uh, shield. Now, once you've used your trigger, uh, there is, if you click yep. the circle below you, there's an icon called um, reaction used. Let's use that one. So it looks like a hand clock with a cross through it. That way we'll be able to track who's used up their triggers. And so kind of Sorry, where is it? Too. It's, uh, you click your token, click the circle directly below yep. your token. Oh, yeah. Then scroll down in their alphabetical order, and the one you want is reaction-used. Okay, so you did telekinetic shield, which reduces the damage of 14 down to only 3. So you took 3 damage, tactician, and then you get knocked prone. 10 might resist. So you make a test. Click your token, click the test roll. You get look for a 10 on the might, and you fail by 1. So you're prone. So we're gonna put a prone on your guy, and then looks like the fury's ready. Go ahead, fury. All right. Um, so this is three. I'm gonna try and do the rush here, and I'm wondering if my mighty leap feature makes me ignore the fact that it's five feet up. You do. So can I rush? Yes, you can rush. You can do the devastating rush. So where's it at? There. You move three straight at target before attack. Do three extra damage. So that's gonna be 14 damage. Then. After you, I'll have the other kobold go. He rushes over to join his ally. They kind of lock shields together, and he's going to try and actually, I'm sorry, he's going to go around, not getting adjacent to the fury as he moves around. So they can attack the prone character. Prone condition, I think, grants one or two boon. Prone grants one boon. So he will take one attack on the tactician with one boon. He'll do the gladius stab. This is going to be 14 points, plus uh, the boon is actually... 16 points. Parry that. Okay, go for your parry. <clears throat> I'd like to use my trigger after the parry. Okay, cool. Okay, 16 damage is halved down to 8. If you spend a focus, it'd be all the way down to 1. Uh, and I have 2. Yep, I'll do that. Okay. And then mark off your trigger, and then Fury, go ahead. Strike back. I will Jason use my strike back. Uh, you want to spend a rage? Oh, when your turn started, you got to roll a d4 for rage. One. Okay. I only got 1. So where should it? I put that? Yeah, that I'll goes it. so everyone's heroic resource. Click your token, and then the gray circle, the top right circle, that's where you track your that's heroic not resource. Victor's, Roger, and it gets consumed, right? It gets used up. So. At, yep. okay. at the end of the battle, it drops to zero, 
And you can kind of see all the details about how it works by clicking your token and clicking the first button with your hit points. And it'll whisper to you how all that stuff works as a reminder. Okay. And I'm sorry, one more time. How do I mark that I've used my... Uh... Uh, you click your token, Perfect. click the circle directly below your token, scroll down until you get to reaction-used, and click that, which I just did. Okay, strike back. Oh, God. So you're doing uh, 9 or 14? 9 or 13? 13, please. 13. I will use my right. one rage. And then mark your trigger. And then, uh, let's see, this stab, he's done. Next to go is... Well, no one wants to go next. Wait a minute. So, I'm I'm in here somewhere, and for some reason I've used my reaction, but I haven't. Oh, well, you take that off. Someone might have actually put it on you. We all control each other's characters, so someone might have just missed the missed their token. Okay, so no one else wants to go right now, uh, but uh, Shadow, you want to move it up to one and go? Oh, I, I misunderstood what zero meant. Um, yeah, I, I want to move up to one. Conduit. Okay, Conduit and Shadow don't carry the order, so go ahead, Shadow. Okay, so we're down one up. You're down one square down, level. yeah. I'm going to uh, move ahead, use Black Ash Teleport. Nice. And poof. So one thing to keep in mind, Black Ash Teleport is a capital M maneuver, so you can't combine it with moving. Oh, you can't run right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, you're I mean, right. You can do a move and a Black Ash Teleport, but then you don't get an action. But that's not fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to get up there without using my teleport. It's only five feet up, so you can run. It doesn't stop your movement. Oh, okay. And you got a speed of nine. So you're very fast. All right. So I'm moving up by this dude. Oops. Okay. Um, let's see. The one to your east, two squares to your east, is going to use his you come here power. Pull an enemy three. So he's going to pull you to him there. Uh, you can still attack the kobold, though, to your west if you like. Okay. Yeah. And then I want to use um, I work better alone to attack the one to the west. All right. Okay. <clears throat> One boon if no ally adjacent to the target. Gain one or two insights. So it's going to be well one boon. So it's going to be 14, 15 points of damage. And then I don't have a maneuver, but I can, as part of... No, that's it. I guess I am I can do nothing else. Okay. So maybe move there. All right. Uh, this cold then... is going to go next. So the initiative basically alternates, as you guys can see, back and okay. forth. And I just, you know, when it comes to your guys' turn, I look at who's got ones, who's got twos. Twos will go next. Ones will go oh. in whatever order I want, because you don't care. So, yeah, if I put in a two, that guarantees your conduit's going to go next, if there's no other twos. Uh, but the Centurion's going first. So he's going to do a thing called uh, Fire Tail uh, Pylum. One line, ten long, one sprint counter. You're going to get the Dwarf and the Fury, the Tactician and the Fury, in a Fire Tail Pylum attack. A line, ten, ten squares long, erupts in fire behind the Pylum, doing... Uh, 11 points of fire damage to the two of you. And the line's going to remain smoldering there. Draw this on the map later. Nobody's done a resistance roll on our side, correct? Um, someone did, yeah. Yeah, I did. Oh, I missed it. I am so sorry. It's okay. Well, So this is fire line, block line of sight there with his pilum. And after he does that, that's a one spring camera power. He's done. So next is going to be the conduit. All right. So uh, if I understand right, I'm going to do my, I can do my signature and I'm going to do the blessed light. Click on that, uh, that line that I drew, the red line, that blocks line of sight. Oh, okay. Well then I'm going to move if I can do a maneuver or no, I'm just going to, I am going to move, but uh, I can see this guy here from here, right? Yep, you sure can. And so I'm going to do um, blessed light on him. And I'm guessing that's, 11. So 11 holy, and you rolled a 6 in your prayer, so you're going to gain 2 virtue. Now, you're the one character who has two different heroic resources, so you can use yep. your gray circle for your virtue, but you have to track your wrath separately, just with a scratch paper or something. So yeah, you gain 2 vir virtue by doing that, and okay. I did the 11 damage to him, and the next uh, attack against him before the start of your next turn is going to get a boon. So glowing yellow one there for that. Alright. So yeah. do I, like, change my initiative to one to show that I want to no. wait before no no okay you only get to go one time in a round so what I'll do is I'll delete everyone at the end of this round and we'll restart got it got it okay now there you go uh, I'm gonna do this close guy here he is gonna go ahead and do he's gonna do a maneuver called tiny bolt um, shower it's gonna be a three cube within ten and he's gonna get the two fighters that are there in the front the fury and the tactician so you guys each take four points of damage. 
from tiny bolts storming down on top of you. Then that was his maneuver, which you can do once per encounter. Next thing he's going to do is a firecracker, which is a 15 foot range. He's going to do it on the fury. So that's 12 points damage, the fury from fire. He's going to push you three. Uh, wait, is that this guy up, up here doing that? Uh, the one to the left, uh, this guy right up here. Oh, okay. Okay, then he pushes you three. Uh, ten might resist it. Oh, uh, re- uh, resist it, is he? So I have a small trigger for resistance, um, or small T trigger. Uh, but that's unfortunately doesn't come into play until you have victories. Oh, that's right. Yeah. you're right. <laughs> Never mind. Got it. Got, got excited. Oh, that, do I, am I unbalanced now? Uh, not at twenty-two out of forty-nine. No, only when you go below zero do you become unbalanced. Oh, you're only bloodied What's right now. What's the What's a bloody? You're bloody. Okay. You got to make a might check to resist being pushed three. Uh, yeah, that makes it. Okay, he's done. Talent's turn. Okay. Um. So these holes in the gears, do they just like they go drop to the floor below? Down? Yeah, they go twenty five feet down, basically. That a hole is big enough for someone to fall in or not? Uh, that that, that one actually is a central shaft that goes up to the uh, level okay. up above. But the, all the other holes. You can fall through. Um, I am going to use my concussive slam, and I want to uh, slide this guy over to here. Cool. That so, hole. So we're going to hit that button so we can see what it does. Yeah. Um, All right. The range is 11, so it looks like he's in range. It's going to do uh, 11 points of damage to him and slide him three. No save, just a slide three effect. Boom, boom, boom. And he plummets down to the ground below, uh, falling uh, 25 feet, or no, five squares for taking five damage and landing on the level below. So he'll be able to fight for a little bit. It comes back. Nice. Three. Ooh, and that's not good for him. He fell into the suction zone mm-hmm. of that thing, mm-hmm. which he then tries to resist with all his might. Uh, gets a 10 on the might check, but unfortunately, I think the, resi- the might check is a 12. Or else he goes in. Let me double check this. Uh, into the space. 12. Yeah. Okay, he gets sucked into the flames. <laughs> you hear scree- kobold screams below. And then anything else, tactician? Or talent, I mean? Um, okay, so I have a maneuver left, right? You do have a maneuver left. I don't, I don't have any maneuver, like uh, special maneuver options. I don't. You so, have uh, telekinesis, which is uh, a maneuver. Oh, where is that? It's, it's a signature. Ability. Oh, there it is. There signature it is. and a okay. maneuver. Yeah. Um, um, does anyone want to get moved? Who's a weight of three or less? I think you're all weights four, unfortunately. Yeah, how much? So you oh, can, yeah. You can do it with one strain. Could I? Uh, so if I tried to throw one of the kobolds, it's only he would get creatures. a save. It's only willing creatures. Only willing creatures. Yeah. Okay. Or intended objects. Okay. Does anyone uh, want to get anywhere? moved? No? Yeah. I, I'm going to stay where I am. Okay, that's mm-hmm. the end of the town. And then we got one more of the kobolds. Uh, he's going to go ahead and do the same thing with the tiny bolt shower. He's going to do that on the two prone guys in the smoke. Four damage each of you. And then he's going to do a firecracker also on... The Barbarian. Barbarian. Firecracker is 14 fire damage and a 10 might to resist being pushed three. I don't think I'm prone, though. You are not prone. Oh, no, that's only an eight might. So you get pushed three. One, two, three, right on the edge of getting pushed in that hole. Uh, That is the end of that round. End of the round, things that happen. So the gear is clunking into place. Uh, No one's really, like, up against where the gears mesh together. So you're kind of safe, all of you. But... Any of you standing on gears, which is everyone except the conduit and the talent, uh, could possibly go prone. Check this here. Gears, okay. On kobolds on gears, uh, nine agility or fall prone. I'm already prone. <laughs> so shadow, nine agility, and fury, nine agility. So shadow made it. Fury may failed it by one. So fury, you're prone now. That was the end of the round. No one's in gears. That's good. Uh, okay, now the fire that's going on over here for this kobold. Burning up in the furnace, he's going to do... He's going to take eight points of fire damage at the start of his turn. And then we clear the initiative, and we do round two. So start thinking about what you want to do. 
If you're ready to go, click your initiative button. Two to go right away, one to go whenever, zero to go last if at all possible. And you can change that at any time. Okay, Conduit, go for it. Um, ooh, you're pretty bad off, Fury, so uh, I'm going to uh, do my... Let me look at here. And also you can all clear your reactions. Healing Grace, and I'm going to use two my two um, virtues for this. So you get to re- uh, spend two recoveries. Nice. So Fury, two and recoveries a- for you be 32 health back. Nice. And that is a free maneuver. So I still have my movement, and then I also have an action, correct? Did I understand correct. that right? That is right. And then um, Fury, that does take up your two of your recoveries. So take that 12 and the center middle top button down to 10. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, the center I'm top is your recoveries. I'm going to do Holy Lance on this kobold here. Go for it. So that's going to be five damage, and then I'm going to pull him three and try to pull him into this crack, because that uh, worked really well. Yeah, that's good. One, two, three. Yeah, he goes in, plummets to the ground, and dies. And I got one Virtue, one Wrath, it looks like. After the Conduit, uh, they're going to go. I'm going to do uh, the one that's taunted by the Tactician. I'm going to attack the Tactician who's prone next to him with a Gladius Stab. Um, uh, that's going to be, and as I'm doing this turn, I'll have you be thinking about what you're going to do. And oh, can I move? Could I move back at my turn if I have? I think I have six. You movement. move as much as your move allows. Yeah, because uh, the free maneuver doesn't cost any of my speed, right? Correct. Yeah, I can get back. Over there. And at any time right. you want to change your initiative number to a zero or to a two, do it. You can just change it anytime you want. Um, okay, so the legionnaire is going. Gladius stabbing the uh, prone tactician, doing eleven. 12 points of damage to the prone tactician. I will trigger that with my parry. Okay. So 12 comes down to 6. Which you could reduce by 4 more. And I'm going to... Um, no. no, I'll leave it at 6. And I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Tom, I, I hate to keep interrupting, but I just want to make sure I understand. The big key triggers, is that once per encounter or once per round? Once per round. And both okay. the conduit and the talent can remove the marker they have on them. That resets at the top of them. So you guys both okay, have your the key triggers back. Yeah, so I'm clicking, um, and, and you, you see you click on the little circle underneath the token, right? Yeah, click on the circle below the token, you get a whole bunch of like picture things. Yeah. Use your mouse yeah. wheel to scroll down. On the right, you'll see yeah. a time clock with a blue box around it. Click I don't that. see that. Um, okay, so if you scroll up, you'll see there's a red X in the top right. Yeah. And then a ear yeah. with a line through it. Yeah. And then an outline of a guy. Yeah. And then a, oh, a I see the clock. clock. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we did the Legionnaire. He did his attack and he's done. And the uh, <clears throat> taunt's till the end of your turn. He is done. Next to go is the Fury. Go ahead, Fury. All right. So half movement still to stand up. Two squares of movement to stand up. All right. And I'm down to five. That red is just smoke, not active fire, right? Correct. Just walk sign of sight. Okay. All right, so I'll do the same thing again. I'll rush here with the devastating rush. Can I see him in the smoke, or is yes. it being... Okay, then I'm going to use my big key, Holy Infusion, to uh, add a boon to that. Okay. 18, 19, oh, 20 points of damage. Wow. Oh, oh 21. plus three more, right? Because you move three squares? Yeah. Three more. Yeah. Just barely standing. What? And... Yep. Yeah. That's it. I'm not quite sure I completely understand the action economy. I think that's all I can do. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, okay, then we have another Legionnaire going to go ahead and go. And he's going to, he's not taunted by anyone. He's got the prone tactician at his feet. So he'll go after that guy with a Gladius stab. Tactician, you're going to take 12, 13 points of damage from that stab. Wow. Here we strike him back for how much? Just one second. I have to see when I click the two. So I didn't do the. What button do I click to get my rages? Uh, rages. You click your token and then click your hit point button. The one right after your initiative buttons. So two. Okay, so you're going to strike back for six or, or nine. My shield thing as well. Uh, fury. How much are you doing? Did we lose the URL? I'll assume six. You spent no fury. Oh, nine. Okay. Nine. Got it. And then we got the talent throwing a shield up to block the gladius stab, taking five more damage off of that tactician. <clears throat> And both of you should mark with your um, triggers used. Legionnaire's done. And then no one cares who goes next. So Tactician, you're next. 
So I'm sorry, how much? Just the uh, five was taken off? Yeah, the telekinetic oh. shield reduced the damage of further five. Okay. Um, then I will stand. That takes two squares of movement. Then I'll just uh, attack the kobold that's almost dead to the north. Okay. Uh, I which one I oh, I'm sorry. You were glad he was stabbed by the one due north of you, which taunted you. Do you want to go after the one oh. that taunted you or no? And the, ta the taunt condition gives you two bane if you don't attack the one taunting you. I will, but in that case, I'm going to move one, two, three, five. Uh, I'll take a chance uh, attack from the... Take um, seven for that. And then I'll do a... Uh, and Fury, you should move. note that you used your reaction. Oh, shoot. Well, I guess I'll just... I'll try to um, shove... Or what is it called? Knockback on the cobalt to the southwest. Okay. So, knockback. That is going to be uh, some maneuver. Knockback. It's going to be a might or agility. Let's say he's going to do might against... Oh, you got it. You got a 15 might check. So, not knockback. Okay. But that was, uh, that was a maneuver, right? It was a maneuver. Now. But you okay. moved already, so you used two maneuvers. So that's oh, your whole yeah, action. That's right. okay. Yeah, that's your whole that's round. Oh, Unless you have three all... maneuvers. Yeah, I have a free maneuver. I'll taunt the... Uh, uh, yeah, I'll taunt the one I just attacked. When you just attacked, it's taunted by you now. Okay. Then, after you, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, you'll see, as we get to the end of the combat, <clears throat> when you have the advantage on numbers, it quickly becomes where you guys get to go a lot of you at one time. Okay, this guy in the back here, he's got all his guys right in the middle. He has already used his tiny bolt shower. He's going to go ahead and use his firecracker on the shadow. So Shadow, you're going to take 15 points of fire damage from that kobold shooting a bolt of fire at you. You're going to be pushed well, three, unless you can make a 10 might to resist it. Okay. Uh, but first I want to use my uh, In All the Confusion, which triggers when an enemy attacks. Nice. Me. You teleport three plus one more for every insight you spend and have the damage, so the 15 is going to become seven. And if you have to teleport out of range, that'd be hard. To do. That would be hard to do. Yeah. So okay. I got to make a what kind of check? A DC 10 might test. So you click your test button. Ooh, look at that roll. 10 on the die, and your might's 1, so 11. You made it. Not pushed at all. He's done. Next to go after you is... And, and the damage was... It was uh, 15 halved, so 7. 7. Okay, got it. And then Shadow, your turn. Okay, well, that, that just threw me off. Um, But now I can go up to this dude and do I work better alone and inflict um 17 points of damage nice and then i'm done okay then we got the guy in the flames trying to save his life here he's going to cut up here mm. after the shadow he's going to try and break out of these flames uh, exit it's a might athletics check to move his speed out of there or he could try and power it down or reverse the fan or disable the fan might athletics or skull not good at any of this stuff he can't do any of that so he's going to try and power it down which is a knowledge clock. We'll do that, powering it down. So with his knowledge check, uh, he doesn't have a knowledge clock work, but his reason check is high enough to power it down one notch. Um, so it's still burning. It's slowing down a little bit. He's done. Talent, your turn. Okay, so this uh, line, red line here, that's just smoke? That's smoke blocking line of sight. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to move one, two, three. Is it an extra movement to jump up to the next level? No. Four, five, six. I, I have seven yet. So I break through here. I can see everybody. I point my hand at this one over here. Okay. Is this is this a, another gap? Yeah, it is. Another hole? Or? Yeah. Okay. So I I uh oh, I gotta click on there. Seven points of damage to that guy. And slide him three. Mm -hmm. Eleven. Yeah, so I'm going to slide him over to the gap. Plums there, takes five points of damage from the fall. Land prone. He's going to be one, two, three, four, five off the wall. Four, five. Luckily not getting sucked into the mouth. And then um, after your turn, that's the end of the round. Next to go. Roll initiative if you know what you want to do. I can help it all, Tom, if I do it three times in a row. <laughs> go, Fury. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and everyone can take off the time marker. Oh. Uh, the clocks are moving, so let's do that real quick. The chunk of the gears and such uh, means that you're all going to have to make a nine acrobatics or fall prone. Except for me, right? Uh, yeah, you're on the stairs, you're good. None of you are where the gears are meshing together, so you're good there. And then Fury, your turn. 
All right, I'll use two to stand up. I will roll for rage. Ugh, nothing. All right, I'm going to take the one that is, all right, always reduce the number. So the one that's hurt, I'm going to attack him with my basic mighty strike, I think it is. Okay. Uh, 11 points of damage. That finishes them. Uh, Anything else? Oh, that's all I'll do. Okay. Nope, I'll stay After right the there. they go. So the one that's taunted by the dwarf is going to go next at his initiative, and he's going to try and attack the dwarf who's taunted by with his gladius stab. You are going to take uh, 12, 13, 14 because you're prone. Uh, were we supposed to make that saving throw at the beginning of the round um, or on our turn? On the beginning of the round. Okay, so if I, I rolled a, a 7 plus agility 2, so 9. You made it. I made it, okay. You made it. Okay, tactician, uh, you are parrying uh, to have that damage. And you're going to spend some more? Yep, I spent one more. All right, mark yourself using your trigger. Then we got to strike back for how much damage? Seven points. Seven as the fury rages at the kobold. Uh, the kobold is done. Did he do any damage at all to you? Tactician? Uh, no, I used no. one. It was so, half to six, and then I spent. Very good. One. So, if all damage is reduced, then the effect does not take place. So, you are not taunted. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, so that was Fury. That's the Legionnaire. Uh, tactician, your turn. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There's, oh. Two, there's multiple of you. Tactician, conduit, you guys have a preference? Uh, I was just going to use a. Uh, I'm going to heal the. Who, who's the this guy right here? Tactician. Tactician. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna heal you. So if you okay, want to cool. first, yeah, I'd be willing to. Okay, yeah. go for it, conduit. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Move to there. Hold on just uh, a second. Uh, let's okay. See here, you come here. Triggered action enemy in three. Move or start turn adjacent. Pull the enemy three, so he can pull you over face two. You can still do what you're doing though. Okay. Now I can do my signature move and then do my uh, uh, free maneuver. Correct. Correct. See if... Yeah, you can okay, do free so... maneuvers at any time. All right, I'm going to do my signature move. Oh, it, like even during other people's turns? No, maneuvers are on okay. your turn. No, okay, that's what I thought. I just okay, good, good, good. Um, okay, I am going to do blessed light on the kobold right next to me. So that's going to be twelve damage, and I get two virtues, and yeah, then coming. I'm going to and then I'm going to use my holy my maneuver healing grace. And I'm going to spend all three virtues to let the tactician get three recoveries back. So one thing to keep in mind in this game, um, three recoveries would give him all his hit points back. Oh, you... no, I'll do. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'll do two. OK. Uh, yeah. If you think he's at uh, one third of his hit points, you'd only want to spend two. Yeah, I'll do two. So you get two recoveries. So tactician, add uh, double your healing and take off two recoveries. That's the uh, top center counter. which starts out at 10 for you. I think it should be down at eight. Nicely done, Conduit. Uh, yeah, that brings me back to that adds forty, right? Uh huh. Double your healing. Oh, so, yep. yeah. So it's I'm one with a max. Okay, I did the Gladius uh, already. I only have two dying kobolds to go. I'll do one that's prone here. He's going to try and come. Actually, both this kobold's going to end up burning up in the flames. This one is going to basically flee, uh, which you guys can take some pot shots at him to kill him, and you got the. Gladius surrounded. So you finish off the, the uh, Gladius without any further difficulty. The one that's fleeing, you can let get away or you can kill him. Five, Where is he fleeing to? Four, out the front doors. Three. Oh, four. yeah, I shoot at him. Okay, you kill him. And the kobolds are defeated. And you gain a victory for uh, having defeated all these kobolds. So, everyone, if you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and double click your token, It'll open up a sheet that shows you your various attributes, which has like your initiative, your hit points, your recoveries, your uh, uh, whichever heroic feature you have, and then it's got victories. So change that victories field to one. You just gained one victory. And we lose our, like, my virtue and wrath and the tactician's focus and all of that, right? All your heroic resources go to zero but for most characters. The talent does not. The talent's got weird things happening. The talent's actually <laughs> got like a negative resource. Yeah, I think. Mean and, and you can see thinking, yeah. what all that does by clicking your uh, H44 button talent. Basically, you start the day at zero. If you use your heroic spells, it might go up. And your uh, maximum currently is at four because you got a victory. And anytime you earn a victory, it goes down by one. So if you had already gained one last battle, it goes down one. So, so there you go. Now, uh, the flames of the Pelum um, evaporate eventually. You guys are out of combat. 
If you want to spend a recovery, you can, no problem. Searching the kobolds, you find, um, what do they have on? Oh, sorry, I've got to go. I've got to. That's okay. Wow. You find I'll, one I'll of the kobolds back. has a note. Uh, the kobold centurion carries a note that reads, Kaloth wants to continue Talia's work. Show them that we are worthy allies by sharing your love of invention when you pass by the divine gear. You look up above you, and with that gear that's above, up above you might be the divine gear that's being spoken of here. Better to keep them happy. The stairs go up from this level, past the uh, gear that's above, to another level, about 50 feet above the ground. You guys ready to proceed on up? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So, stairs wind around. Okay, the divine gear is over here now. And an enormous gear spins slowly at the heart of this level of the tower, glowing with brilliant white, white light that extends out to take the form of spectral wings. A chorus of three voices speaks simultaneously in harmony. Uh, are you back yet, Josh? I'll actually type this out so Josh can read it when he gets back. The voices say, I, Kaloth, am the angel of divine creation and the instrument of inspiration that protects this sacred tower. Proceed no farther, thieves, or my divine grace will turn to ire and you shall be not more than little puddles of gore. What do you guys say to that? Wow. <laughs> uh, um, can I do a clockwork check again? Uh, what do you say, Just first of all? What... You gotta be quick on your reply. Okay. I... I am going to let's see here. Use that note. I'm not a thief. My ability. Um, You're not a thief, you say? Then what are you no. doing here in this tower? I'm looking Me. for some people who've been kidnapped to rescue them. Hmm. Me. I cannot. I cannot let you pass. At least not till I find out your true intentions. Our intentions are to continue Talia's work. And uh, we begin a negotiation with the angel. Who's got an interest of two, and with an interest of two will not let you pass, and a patience of three, and a number to persuade him of thirteen, bar any other any other information. But in a negotiation, if you have any motiva- motivations that you know of for this angel, um, then those anytime you voice one of those, it can raise their interest. But you got to avoid their pitfalls, because anytime you voice a pitfall, it can lower their interest. And if you just don't know of any motivations or any pitfalls that you want to voice. You can just try to do a plain, you know, persuasion charm, in which case you'd have to roll against a target number of 13. But the first thing you said was, you plan to continue Talia's work. Um, and he says, that is that is very good. A great creator's legacy should be continued with honor. And his interest is now up to three. And he tells you, I will let you pass. And you can, however, keep trying to motivate him further, like he might give you assistance in some way. At least you've got them motivated to let you pass. So that was uh, Ryan who said that. Let's let anyone else speak who wants to. Anyone else want to try to persuade the angel further? Anyone else an inventor? Uh, we had a blacksmith or something, right? I think he's... He might be away. Oh, right. Yeah. You want him to... you? Uh, someone other than Ryan can speak for him. Like uh, David, if you want to take... Or RL. If you want to take the voice of the blacksmith... <laughs> <laughs> um uh let me channel my inner josh um uh, you know we're also i'm gonna screw this up tom so uh I'll back. he's back thank god thank god <laughs> <laughs> okay um okay um oh i'm negotiating you're with negotiating with an angel an angel says has first called you guys thieves and you quickly point out we're not thieves we're here to help talia continued Talia's work and when the angel heard that it, he was impressed and said he would let you pass and you can leave the negotiation at that but if you want to try and negotiate further to maybe get the angel's assistance in some way you can keep trying to touch upon the angel's motivations you want to avoid any pitfalls though well I, I will uh, I will talk about how I am a priest of the god of blacksmiths um, who clearly um, as an angel of divine creation uh, I am sure that you are, um, if not a servant of the God of Blacksmiths, uh, at least uh, an ally. Um, and I am here to ensure that this uh, wondrous creation uh, is properly studied and um, preserved and maybe even um, the 
use for which it was originally created uh, can be restored to it. Um, and for that reason, you know, any assistance that uh, a, a divine and uh, wondrous uh, creature such as yourself could provide us would be much appreciated. Hey, I don't feel bad because that's exactly what I said. That's exactly you yeah. you're off. Uh, uh, what? He says, I can assist you. Um, I can tell you if you have any questions about the tower, some about the tower, and you are free to proceed. Uh, what was the what was this tower's original purpose? It was both a laboratory for invention and a timepiece for the countryside around. There, what happened? There's I'm also sorry. experiments that Talia would do having to do with time. And what happened to render it abandoned? Talia left some time ago, I know not why. I have guarded it ever since. There were kobolds in here. Do you know what their intent is? They have a leader. Her name is Octavia. She's an inventor as yourselves and a blacksmith such as you. Do you know why they would attack us uh, immediately upon seeing us? No, no. I suspect now they might have lied to me. I think you may be right. I would recommend you smite them with your divine might. Well, I cannot leave this place, but I will grant you all uh, a boon. So he grants you all a recovery. So if you spent a recovery, you can increase your recoveries by one. Oh, man. And you can pass. And uh, that is all. Unless you have more questions about the tower. I personally do not. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. You're on up to the next level. I'll do the March Hunter like you were doing before. Should I recall? I think the tactician was up front. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tactician. Well, Shadow, then Tactician, then Fury, I think. That's why it went March Hunter wise. So let me reveal what room you come up to next. Beautiful. You can hear the clicking. A uh, sound of clocks kind of growing in strength as um, the sound of the angel fades away below you. Then you come up to this chamber where you see more kobolds. Mm -hmm. The chamber itself, however, is gorgeous. Uh, swirling magical light lazily changes colors here. All the colors of the rainbow. Illuminating the slow turning shafts that connect the clock face windows to a massive metal device in the center of the room. You see up above you rafters and great bells hanging. They're about 25 feet up. Uh, there's wooden walkways between the bells. There's a ladder you can see leading up to the walkways over here. There are kobolds sitting atop the device in the center of the chamber playing a game of dice together. Uh, there are similar creatures patrolling the floor, almost like a clock, like, like uh, hands of a clock. Uh, but they're not made of flesh. Instead, these clockwork gears move their metal arms and legs. Little clockwork kobolds. Mm. And with that, it is break time. Oh, yeah. Then we'll launch into a fight as a kobold's attack. So break until um, 30 after. You mean as the kobolds negotiate and uh, equally divide the treasure they found? That's it. That's it. See you guys in uh, 10. Okay, so the kobolds, the mechanical kobolds, and all go into motion and attack immediately. But there is like this massive, strange temporal surge that sweeps through the room, and all, all the kobolds are slowed for this whole round. And let's see if they go first, you go first. High goes to you guys. They are going to go first. So I'm going to have the kobold, little kobold minions here in the front attack first. So the ones over to the west rush, or the ones over these rush to the west. Speed of six. So they only get three squares with the temporal surge. Three, three. And then. These guys will move again. He's slowly trying to charge forward. These two, however, will close the distance on the shadow and both attack the shadow. So the first attack on the shadow is one point of damage. The second attack on the shadow is three points of damage. Then we got Tactician and Fury. Oh, Fury. Oh, no one cares. Fury, go ahead. Uh, all right, with the Tactician behind me, um, I'm going to move down five and I am going to see how many rage I get. Perfect. No. And so I moved one, then I can use half of my movement to slip away and not get hit. If you want to do shifting during this maneuver, your speed is shifting. counted as half. So your speed is normally, um, seven. So you'd have a speed seven. of three during yeah. this maneuver and you would not provoke. 
Uh, now, okay. this so, is uh, this is a wall here. This is, you know, 10 feet from the stairs up to the... Oh, roger. But you could go one, uh, two, you know, three, and back up there. That changes my tactic. I'll move over here. Um, trying to get around them. I will attack just a normal mighty, because I can't rush. Okay. So, 13 points of damage. 13, that kills this one. And with minions, which these are, if you kill a minion and you do enough damage to the threshold of killing a second minion... You get to choose any other minion that is in your reach or any minion that's adjacent to the one you kill. So you kill this one and this one. Now, now all circles definitely nice. you're going to kill them as well. You can also so keep I moving. Move six. That's four, five, six, seven. All right. Uh, the kobold's up on top of the platform. One of them is going to go next. So he's going to slide on down. One, two there speed is normally eight to there he is carrying a very long spear and he's going to move to there and then bury the point on the fury trying to stab you with the point of his spear doing 14 points of damage what is uh what does the immunities mean on the for your raging so yeah your first level of oops, uh there we go um immunity three means you take three less damage on every attack thank you so much you bet and the telekinetic shield. Okay, so the 14 drops down to only being 11. Then 3 drops down to being 8. Mercy. And talent, make sure to hit your trigger. Hit your uh, used reaction. Okay, the barrier of the point. Um, so now it has an ongoing damage of 4. That will last until you regain any health. And it's a 10 agility to resist it. So make an agility test. Oh, no, that's a test, not a resist. Is that a resistance or a test? It's a resistance. Okay. Uh... I think if I'm reading this right, it says after a hero within eight squares, if you makes a resistance roll, you can increase the result by an amount equal to your victories. So does that mean I get to know what the result is first before making that decision? Uh, victory point resist. An ally makes a resist roll. Does it say after? On the yeah, actual character the, sheet? Yeah. yeah, character sheet says after a hero within eight squares, if you makes a resistance roll. Then you may. You can, yeah. Okay. And he, and he failed. Well, what is it that, what was his total? Failed by one. Then I'm going to... Uh, Use my one victory point to give him to where he... Uh, right. You made it. So no ongoing damage. That kobold is done. Next person Thank you. to go for the party is going to be the conduit. Uh, once per turn is different from once per round, right? Yep. So how does it define a turn and with the way we do our initiatives? Uh, this is your turn right now. So you, on oh. your turn, you can do whatever power you're thinking of doing one time. But what about that... Uh, uh, what about the reaction thing that I just did? Is, is that that's once per encounter and once per round? So you can't do a okay. you can't do your victory um, plan resist again this encounter. You can do your other victory plan, but not this round. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So I can only do that one. Got, I'm I'm tracking. All right. So I'm going to move to here, and I'm going to. Um, that's like way do... up. That's like way up. So you're downstairs right now. Oh, you're like, you're I like see. fifteen feet down the stairs. So you need to go to your west get upstairs oh, but can i see this guy right here from where i'm at since he's high higher or no because i'm no. down okay so one so two, you get up three. south of the tactician and you can okay so one two three four i can see him now oh, yeah. right yep mm, that's not gonna do what i want it to i don't think no i'm not going to do that um, i'm instead going to do um uh blessed light on this guy right here go for it Remember, you can save a step by not pinging. Just tell me a cardinal direction from an ally. All right, uh, sorry. You can just go right to the button. Uh, okay, um, so nine damage on that guy. So that is I... enough to exceed his threshold by one. So you can kill one of the other two that are adjacent to him. I will kill the that the uh, the one who is directly south of whoever this is. The Fury. You got it. The, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Who is this right here? That's the talent. The talent. Okay, but they're not like... Were they adjacent to each other, or is no. were they not? They were not. Oh. Then I'm going to do the one next to the Fury. Too late. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to do that one, <laughs> the one next to the Talon. No, you're fine. Okay, um, are y'all done? And then I am going to use uh, my free maneuver to do the... I, I got a Wrath and a uh, Virtue. I'm going to use my Virtue to do Healing Grace on the Shadow. So you get one recovery. You got to spend your recovery to get that recovery shadow. So knock down your recoveries by one, increase your healing, probably up to your max hit points the way it looks right now. And the conduit's done. And after the conduit, I'm going to take this guy and have him go next. 
And he's going to move to the edge of the top. So one of the kobolds at the top um, unfurls a net, throws it down toward the barbarian. Spiked net whirls through the air. Barbarian strikes you doing 15 points of damage, and it will restrain you unless you make a 10 agility test to resist it. So you are restrained. So, you put, like a rest those, uh... so put a restrain marker on your guy, and he can shift to before or after that attack. So he's going to shift back. Kind of get himself 12, some right? cover up there. <clears throat> 12 home to the three. Um, okay, so you rolled a seven, right? No, and no, no. I mean, for the uh, rage. Can I take that 15 and make it a 12? Yes, that's correct. Okay. okay. And put a restrain marker. That's like a lock on your guy. He moves back to there, and he should be done. Tactician, you can go next. Okay. Uh, tactician will move up to there, and... Uh, I'll do a positioning strike. Oh, actually, uh, I gain one focus. That doesn't change anything. Uh, yeah, I'll positioning strike on the cobalt to the southeast. And he's going to gain a boon on this one. Okay. All right. 16 damage. 13, 16. And then the talent can shift three. All right. Shift three talent. Uh, and then I'll taunt the cobalt that I just got. Okay. Can I shift right now? Yep, you can shift three right now. He's and this is the top of the stairs, right? That's the top of the stairs. That's correct. Two, four. This guy will come down to here. Uh, let's see, restrain. Let's see what the restrain condition does. Restrain, speed zero, bane on your attacks. You grant boons to attacks against you. Okay, so this guy's going to bury the point onto the barbarian with one boon. So that's 18, 19, 20 points of damage to the barbarian. Wish I was closer. Six. So I've got a question. Athletics doesn't help me at all with, uh, doesn't add anything to my trying to get out some money the net when it's thrown. Um, let's see. That was a, that was a say, right? It was an agility, agility did check or agility resist. Um, no skills generally don't add to any resistance rules. Roger. Okay. Okay. So you took 20 points damage. I'm going to mark that off. Got a DC 10 agility, or you're going to have some ongoing damage. Nice roll. No ongoing damage. We made one. <laughs> no ongoing damage. Then he's going to use the shifty feet to back up to there after the strike and um, use his power. Then after him comes the shadow. And I don't think the shadow ever did, did his recovery. Oh, uh, David, you got a recovery. So you can lower your recoveries from eight down to seven and add uh, basically 11 hit points back to, up to your maximum health. Sounds good. And then it's your turn. All right, so Shadow is going to move one, two. Can we move through allies squares? Yeah, no difficult terrain to move through allies. You can move through enemies by making an acrobatics check. I don't know. It's a DC nine, I think. Um, it varies by a few other factors. You can look it up if you want to do it. Okay, well, um, Shadow darts across the room and uh, singles out a lone foe to attack for 14... 17 points of damage. South or west? South. South. 17 damage to the south one. Got it. Okay. After the shadow comes uh, the other minions. The uh, blue minions there. The temporal anomaly, though, is slowing them down. They're not going to make a lot of progress. They're going to move uh, to the north. These shafts that are going across the room that they're about to pass under, they're small enough to run underneath them. But for you guys, you'd have to drop prone, crawl, and then stand back up to get through them. Anyway, that's one move. One, two, five. You're out of range, so he's going to keep going. One, two, three. Go into there. And all three of them come running up like that. And then these guys are going to go this way. Keep running this way. Slow motion. They are done. And then talent, your turn. Okay. Um, I am going to use my heroic ability, Dagger of the Mind. Ooh, nice. Okay. Okay, so you get to pick three creatures. Which three do you want to hit with that? Um, <clears throat> this guy. Okay. This guy. Okay. And this guy. Okay. So you do four points of psychic damage to all three of them. They are all dazed till the end of your next turn, and let's make a DC 10 um, resist roll, or reasoning roll. Resist it. And you rolled a four on your strain die, which means you don't gain any strain. If you'd rolled a two, Yay. you'd gain one strain. If you'd rolled a one, you'd gain two strain. So now I got these right. guys making reasoning tests. That's oh, a... also, um, when I deal damage, I add one for each victory I have, so... You want to do that button? Hit that button for us. BP damage trigger. Uh, oh, what is it called? 
BP damage trigger. B this one right here. Deal damage once per encounter oh. per round. Deal extra victories damage. You have one victory, so one more damage to each of these guys. Oh. Any other triggers you want to use? Um, no. I don't have any other triggers. I've used the one. Your one other trigger you have is Drain Magic. Um, this one's got a range of 20. When they're making a oh. resist roll, which they're about to make, you grant them two banes. <clears throat> so do I have to do that before they yeah. make their roll? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I will use that. Okay. Which one of those three do you want to use that? Um, the one farthest away. One farthest away. Okay. So the first one made his resistance roll. He needed a 10. He made it. Exactly on a 10. The second one making his resistance roll. He failed it. And so he's dazed. And that day is going to last until the end of your talent's next turn. Remind me when your next turn ends up. Write it down or something and tell me, hey, remove all those days because my turn's up. And then the last guy, he's going to have two Bane on this check. I don't think there's any way he makes this. Uh, no. So he is also dazed. All right. That is the end of the round. I think of anything triggers here at the end of the round. Think of. So you guys can all take off of your triggered markers and then think about what you want to do in the next round. When you're ready, roll your initiative. They're going to go first, though. And also a temporal wave washes through the room again. And this time it's going to do, ooh, I think it's going to do something that affects everyone. Everyone in the room has their speed doubled. Ooh. You all have twice the speed now. Okay. Speed doubled. We'll have the good old minions go next. Hey, with blinding speed, all of a sudden, after going in slow motion, come blinding speed, um, circling around your tactician. And then attack it for one, and then four, and then two, and then two, and two. They are done. Next goes conduit. Okay, uh, I'm gonna shield that. Uh, you can do the very I'm, last one. I'm going to shift back. Hold up just a second, conduit. Okay, so the very last two damage you don't take, uh, tactician. Okay, now you can go conduit. I'm gonna shift back, and I am going to cast. Um, uh, blessed light on the on the one that is north uh, west of the tactician. Fire away! Oh, yeah. So that's thirteen. Kill him! Kill him! And then I get uh, two two wrath. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, barbarian or fury. I don't have any virtues to help you with uh, or, or, or virtue to help you with healing. What else can you do? Kind of? did, uh, did, did I hear that they're Did I hear they're changing the fury's name to Reaver? I don't know. Maybe for some reason. Hmm. Maybe I heard that. Okay, got it. What else? No, that's it. That's uh, it. I'll... All right. Yeah. Then the kobold up there on the top of the thing is going to go next. Let me add his turn. What does dazed do to them? Dazed makes it so they can only do one action. Uh, condition dazed. I mean maneuver or action, not both. Yeah, maneuver okay. or action, not both. Okay. So he's going to go ahead and do What's this one. <laughs> He might actually not go next, given that he's dazed. Check the range on something that's got. Okay, he's gonna go ahead and move. Speed of seven, easily. He's gonna come right over to, let's see, four, five. Any further, any provoke. So he goes to there and he's done. <clears throat> next to go is uh, the tactician. All right, um, stay where I'm at. Uh, I gain a focus, which so I have three now, so I'm going to do a inspiring attack. Okay. I'm going to do it on the guy to my southeast. Okay. For 11. Got it. And then um, the uh, Fury can do a uh, recovery. Okay. Um, <clears throat> he's actually formed up doing some shield wall stuff. Let's see how much of this does he get. Weapon immune three. Uh, if adjacent to an ally that also has that power, which is the one he's adjacent to, let's see if this guy, yeah. So he takes less by the Okay. And then talent, you can do a recovery, right? I mean, uh, Fury. Uh, Fury. Okay. So take your resistance, your recovery is down by one. Use your health. Tactician. And all done? I'm going to use my... Oh. Uh, um, hit the button. You don't have to say it. Just hit the button, then say it. Yeah. There you go. You get an extra hit point back. Nice. I'll taunt the uh, guy to my southwest again. Okay. Then the guy you're south of us will go next. He's dazed. Oh, no, he's not dazed. One of the ones not dazed. He's going to go ahead and do long spear little arms on uh, the barbarian. Oh, boy. No, he's going to suffer two. He only gains one. So he's going to do the tactician. Long spear little arms on the tactician. Uh, 14 parry it. 14 points. And he can shift two before or after making 
So these don't provoke the shifts, and the speed doubles the shift speed. Shifting all the way around there. Oh, but he can't move farther away from you because he's taunted by you. I'm sorry. He stays there. Uh, he's done. Next to go is the Fury. Uh, what role to unrestrain? To break the restraint, it's a uh, might or agility resist. Same as the original role that it inflicted upon you, which was a 10. There you go. You are unrestrained. You can shift one as part of that. Two, because speeds, everything sped up. You take the uh, lock off your guy. That was a maneuver. You have your action left. That, that was the maneuver? Yep. Um, I will... Oh, I need to roll my thing. Oh, that's four. So that's an ad, another four, but I will spend that four right now and do a whirlwind. Well, that's stupid. All right, six, seven, eight. So, uh, you can kill this guy, two. this guy, do eight to this guy. Got it. You can move anywhere? Uh, you can't, actually. Never mind. Okay. Uh, you can't actually move because whirlwind doesn't give you move. Ah, uh, but the maneuver that gives you the shift you can do before or after your attack. So you can actually, I think, shift is part of your getting out. So you can go ahead and shift now. That was the Fury. Um, he's gone. He's gone. We got a dazed one south of the shadow. We're going to go next. Dazed means he's just one attack. He's going to go do little long sweet little arms on the shadow. Uh, that's 10 points damage to the shadow. And then he can shift two for after the attack there. And I use my strike even though I was. I can Wait, still that use was my me strike. for the 10 points? Yeah. I'm... The shadow took 10. He was. Yeah, uh... one, I definitely want to use my reaction and teleport and have okay, that. Okay, go for it that button so hit you did 10 if you get three squares or more away from him you'll reduce the damage even more by the button so we can see what it does yeah because it does some extra stuff and all this confusion that's it okay so you teleport three uh more if you want to use insight to reduce the damage in half so the 10 becomes five okay well i'm gonna teleport out of the out of his range by using some insight so oh wow teleport way far away um so you reduce the damage to another four so five becomes one. Took one damage from that. He's done. Uh, strike back. Can you do a strike back from two away? Strike back, trigger adjacent enemy. So no, you can. Um, so that was that guy's turn. Now the shadow's turn. Remember this turn, shadow, your speed is double. So your normal speed of uh, nine is actually 18. Okay. Well, I'm going to use that uh, boost of speed to go prone and then go okay. up again. Okay. And... Uh, circle around here do these gears look dangerous like if i if you stand push them and... into if you push someone into the gears or they pushed you in you might take some damage okay well i'll go here maybe less danger um so use all my movement to go there and then i'm going to attack the guy to my right with i work better alone take that that's sad but and, um, but you get a boon yeah two boons so two 16. Boons. So not not so bad. Not so bad after all. Okay. Uh, yeah. After you, I think you've done all of them already. Uh, so talent, go ahead. Okay. Uh, um, so I think I'm going to um, I'm going to concussive slam this guy and throw him over into the gears. Killed him. Nice shot. Uh, then finish your move wherever you'd like to be or do any other things you want to do. And then that'll be the end of that round. Yeah, I think I'm good. You're good? Okay. So then the temporal status this round is going to go ahead and be a three again. So it's going to slow down the kobolds again. The kobolds are back to being slowed. And the kobolds are going to go first. And I'll go ahead and do these. Uh... Oh, there's actually two groups of minions. I might have forgot to do this group of minions. I'm going to have him go first, moving over to there. And this is actually from last round. Um... Fury, you took two damage, but you're immune to three, right? So Correct. Took, so I get none. plus one. You took, you took plus one. Yeah. None. Okay. Oh. Now they're going to go. Um, I'm going to head and do this guy. You'll try and throw another spiked net on the barbarian. Um, 13 damage. Are we in a new round or? Yes, it is a new round. Okay. I'm going to, um, I'm going to try and shield that. Okay, Fury. You're 13 minus 6, so you're down to 7 damage. And then you made your uh, resist roll, no problem. And he is going to be done. Next is Fury or Conduit? Uh, 
very out of place. I'm hoping to try to heal you if that makes a difference on whether you want me to go first. It doesn't matter. Okay, go ahead. You don't need it. I mean, you do. All go right, ahead, I'll go ahead. first. Um, and I'm going to attack the kobold directly to the east of the fury with blessed light. So it's going to be a 10, and I do get a virtue and a vice or and a, a wrath. And so uh, I'm going to do healing grace on the fury. You get to spend a recovery. Oh, and it's uh, 10, 10 damage on the kobold. Got it. All right. After the conduit, I'm going to do uh, the kobold south of the fury. And he's uh, taunted by the tactician. So long spear, little arms, and you tactician, 16 points of damage. Uh, parry that. Which one is this? The one south of you, fury. Uh, strike back for seven. Got it. Uh, let's see here. He can shift after doing that, but he's taunted, so he can't move away from the tactician. So he's done. Fury, your turn. All right. Uh, I'm going going to... He's glow. The guy one next to you is glowing and will grant a boon. What? I will one. attack Roger. I will attack that. And I'm going to try to make him even more effective with my holy infusion. Two boons. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen damage. Uh, and I got one boon for being rage six. Oh. So another three more, so sixteen damage. Holy Almost. cow! And, <laughs> and, yep, and I will use my, I will use a recovery as a maneuver action. Normally that's not, but I know you can. You have the glowing recover once per encounter. Uh, okay, and that is a fury. Now their turn, and I am down to some minions. So this guy go after. He's going to attack the fury with his three damage, doing nothing to the fury. And then uh, Tactician, your turn. No, Shadow, your turn. Okay, Shadow will use Fade on the guy to his north. You kill him with a stab of your dagger. And I'll Fade over here and say done. Okay, then that guy's going to go after the Shadow. And he's going to try and stab at the Shadow with his little Ugio. One point of damage, Shadow. And then the Tactician, your turn. All right, I'm going to trigger uh, the and all this confusion. Nice. Okay, Tactician, your turn. Uh, precise, a, uh, precise attack against the kobold east of the Fury. That finishes him. Excellent. Javelin uh, to the head. And then you guys wipe up the last of the little mechanical kobolds. And, oh no, there's two kobolds left. Uh, the mechanical one can't communicate. The other one can if you want to try and capture him. Or you can kill him. Uh, let's try to get some uh, information from him. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Grab the kobold. He's uh, venomous and spitting and angry and mad, but you can try to do a charm test or a... Um, Ooh, I am skilled in charm. Hold up, let me see what the other choices are here. Intimidation, maybe? Charm, deception, or intimidation. Uh, I'm proficient in charm. Uh, I, as am I. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think charm would you guys can see each other's ability scores and such, so you can know who's better at it. Let's see. It's a uh, presence charm. Presence is uh, it's going to be the conduit. Make a charm check. Conduit. All right. I'm going to tell him that uh, um, if he would just uh, um, calm down and be peaceful and listen to us, uh, you know, the uh, he could uh, become he could the grace of my God will you know soothe his worries. He says, "You'll never stop, Octavia." The storm that is brewing is a chance for Octavia to power up a metal warrior that we have found inside the tower. She's already made smaller versions of this warrior that look like these kobolds here, but the one she will wear will be more powerful by far. You'll never stop her. And uh, then starts just ranting and raving. You don't get any more information out of him besides that. When you came into the tower, there were storm clouds on the horizon and they were moving your direction. So there might be a storm coming like he suggested. Who this Octavia is, you're not sure, but some sort of kobold uh, leader. Now the chamber, let me describe this chamber for you again. So you got these, you know, these clocks on the four faces. You've got this central uh, thing that all the shafts go into that the kobolds were up on top of. You've got a ladder that goes up here. You can, of course, search all the kobolds. And so what would you like to do? Um, I, want, I want to do a... Clockwork check, just observation, just to see <clears throat> if there's anything special or interesting going on. Yeah, there's not anything. Well, there's clearly something strange going on with the time warping and speeding up and slowing mm. down in the chamber. 
You're not right. sure what's causing that main effect. Uh, it kind of seems to be emanating from the central, uh, that central mechanism there that the kobolds were up on top of. Can, what else want to do? can I, uh, can I stealth? Because I have stealth as one of my skills. Can I stealthily climb the ladder? Yes, you can walk over to the ladder and start stealthily climbing it. While he's doing that, what do you want to do, Shadow? Well, I do want to check out this mechanism in the center of the room. Okay. Uh, there's no entries into it that you can see on the on the ground level. Uh, do you want to do anything else besides that? Well, let me climb up. It. All right. Up on top of it, you see that there is a, a wheel. Um, let's see. Like a control wheel? Kind of. There's a locking wheel along with an inscription carved into the wheel that reads... When we spend time together, it keeps us young. Loneliness makes us old. You can also make a reason uh, check, a reason test, uh, adding knowledge magic if you have it. While you're doing that, uh, what do you want to do, tactician? Uh, what do you want? Uh, can, can I assist the uh, shadow with... Yeah, you can climb up there and check stuff out. Uh, what do you want to do, conduit? Um, well, I mean, I think that as... Uh... A devotee of the blacksmith, uh, the conduit would want to check out all of these mechanical gears and stuff as well. All right, checking out all the mechanical gears and talent. What do you want? Um, yeah, after doing my observations, I guess um, I'll go see what these guys are pondering. Okay, uh, you can make a, a reason mat knowledge magic check. Seven, ten. Okay, so the two of you are trying to. You know, figure out what the inscription means. You you think it's some sort of hint that the vault door must be opened in a specific way, but uh, you can't sense any more than that with your knowledge of magic. Um, Barbarian, you see them all grouping up on top of that platform there. You want to keep climbing up the ladder? Well, it was just one of those confusion things. I thought everybody else was coming with me, um, so I'll just slide back down like a fireman. Okay. And then sheepishly walk over. Okay, so you guys are standing up there with this locking wheel with the inscription, when we spend time together, it keeps us young, loneliness makes us old. Uh, looks like you can basically just rotate the wheel to unlock the vault and see what's inside. What do you guys want to do? Sounds good to me. Spin it. You're going to spin it? A special way you want to spin it? Uh, oh, oh, wait. No, Ryan, you should not talk. Oh. Anyone else have any comments? Uh, we should do it together. Oh, okay. Yes. You want to go help the Smart. Shadow of Fury? Yeah. Okay. So I thought shadow I over and Fury shadow. spinning it together? If I'm up there, I'll, I'll help spin It'll it. assist too. as well. Okay. All right. You guys are able to open it up and do not age to Venerable since you did it. <laughs> so that's good. And inside the vault, you find a ladder leading down into a cramped, cramped vault, which is lined mostly with empty shelves, except for a set of tools and a clockwork spear. That resembles a large drill bit at the end. The vault also contains an old note that remembers that reads, remember water, then ash, then earth, all of that followed by the shrinking suns, leave the specters of death for last. Uh, this uh, drill spear is pretty potent. Um, any of you that use heavy or medium weapons or a polearm in your kit, which I think the Fury does, and there might be others, tactician maybe, you could use this and add two damage to every melee weapon attack you make building you can also bore holes through things then the tools are talia's tools wrenches hammers drills knives and other implements you can add a d8 to a test or a trap or locks or things like that who wants to carry the drill spear uh, not i okay someone said not i does it who wants to carry it i'll take it okay one, two, the three, fury three. is ca carrying that spear who wants to carry the um tools uh, the conduit would be inclined to carry. Okay, tools. you're carrying the tools now. You finish searching this level and find nothing else here, so you can climb up the ladder next. When you're ready. You can see climbing up the ladder um, that there are bells up there. Rickety wooden walkways form a path between seven large bells, all of varying sizes and carved with arcane symbols. And again, Ryan, you want to be quiet. Yep. Three of the bells are painted mm -hmm. gold, along with one blue bell, one gray bell, and one green bell. The largest of the bells is bronze and is set with a pattern of skulls. Uh, any of you trained in magic, knowledge magic, can make a test. See if you can discern anything else. 
Any of us? Trained in knowledge, man. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The bells are magical. You're sure of that. The symbols in the bells are related to conjuring, and ringing them in a particular order will cause them to conjure some sort of magical power. I would uh, want to ring the bells in the order of blue, gray, green, gold, um, going from biggest to smallest, and then the bronze bell with the pattern of schools last. Any objections? Makes sense to me. Uh, what, what, what was your reasoning there? Blue bell is for water, gray bell is for ash, Green bell is for earth. Uh, the gold bells are the suns, and you're going from largest to smallest to show that they're the shrinking suns. And then the uh, bronze bell with the pattern of schools is the specters of death saved for last. Okay. Okay, you ring the bells. As the sound of the last note dies away, you hear a voice, the voice of a female, saying, right time to fly. And you all gain a fly speed equal to your walk speed. And you can see um, above your head is another set of rafters and a loft. There's a loft up there, five more squares up. So this would put you 125 feet up above the ground. And you can just fly right up there now that you have your fly speed. So oh, we're at two victories now, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So after the kobolds, let's, let's catch up on victories. So after the kobolds in the clock tower, you gain a victory. Um, you also gained a victory. Sorry. You gained a victory for the negotiation that you had with the angel. So you should have been at two victories in the last fight, not one. Sorry about that. And you gained a victory for ringing the bells in the correct order. Uh, so that puts you to four victories. So everyone, make sure you update your victories to four. And, and technically the Fury should... Or no, who was it that I did? Uh, it doesn't matter. I think it was the Fury should be one more hit point, but that's fine. So then this is what you see on the upper level. One more level up. Uh, a network of thin rafters connects to a dusty loft that reeks of bird poop. The loft holds an old bed, a chest, a sack bursting with corn kernels, and a couple of tables. One holding a notebook, the other a chessboard. There is metal rattling because you see three bruised, gagged humans chained to each other at the wrist, ankles, and neck, shifting their weight uncomfortably while sitting on the loft floor. Beside them is an aviary full of ravens. Um... The door to the aviary is open, allowing their birds to come and go. And you see that they can also exit the tower via an open window at the back of the aviary. So here is the three humans all gagged up. This is the aviary. And this window is open to the outside. And you can basically fly to wherever you want to fly to. So um, Shadow, what do you want to do? Well, I'm going to fly up to one of the humans and start untying them. Okay. Everyone else can move to where you want to be. A shadow's moving up there. If you move yourself by the humans, you'll be helping Shadow. I don't... Where's our tokens? Oh, yeah. Can you move her? Wait back. Okay. So as you're coming on up, um, anyone trained in carpentry make a test. This will be intuition, craft, carpentry. Hey, I have carpentry. Go, Go figure. It. Intuition. It's just... Yeah, just hit the test button. All right. So that's going to be a eight... Uh, 12. Let's roll. 12. You note as you're flying up past the rafters that several of the rafters have recently been shaved down, weakening them to form basically a trap. Uh, there are weak spots in the rafters right off of the bedchamber, like right here, and also right near the stairs. So the ladder, that is. So if you were to step on either of those segments of the rafters, you might fall right through and 100 feet or yeah, 100 feet down or 50 feet down. Then, uh, da, 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 da. as you're moving to try and help these humans, the gagged and chained humans, they, uh, everyone make a reason notice check for me. Titian's right there nearby, okay. And others also noticed. Um, you note that this, these uh, humans have burn marks on their necks and wrists and ankles where the chains are. Not just, not just scuff marks or scrape marks, but actual burns. And, um, they are shaking their heads as you go to try and unchain them. Don't touch well, them. Don't want to touch those chains. They're gagged, so they can't say anything. Their cries are muffled. All right. Well, the first thing to do is get to get the gag off then. All right. You take the gags off of them. They tell you um, tampering with the chains could cause a shock. You think you could try and disarm them with the knowledge magic check. Uh, unlock them with skullduggery. Break them with craft blacksmith or vigor. We'll give any of those a try. So disarm or unlock or break. 
Well, I will try unlock with Skullduggery. Okay. Nine, what about the new tools? Nine agility Skullduggery. Yeah, you're good. No problem. Shadow definitely unlocks the chains. Freeing the three sages. The three sages, just as you expected, uh, Darrow and Willet and Moria, Mo Moira, are super grateful that you came to rescue them. And they can share with you their story of what happened to them when they came here. Um, they came from Silton Heath, just as you suspected. Lady Rana sent them. Um, they were supposed to wait for an escort, but they couldn't contain their excitement, so they went in anyway. And as soon as they entered the tower, they were, they were, they actually knocked on the door. A crew of kobolds answered and attacked and knocked them all unconscious. They awoke here in the loft, and sometimes they've been here like for a week so far. Sometimes the kobolds bring them food and water, but they don't speak to us for long. Mostly the food consists of the corn that they give to the ravens. Uh, we've seen the kobolds bringing pieces of metal out onto the roof through the Avery. They point to the Avery that Fury is standing by. Um, lots of banging sounds coming from the roof. I think the kobolds are building something, one of them says. Looking around, um, you can see that also here. There's a notebook over there on the table. There's a chest. There's a chess board. Fury, you notice a few kobold scales mixed in with all the raven feathers. So you suspect, as the sages said, they have been coming and going this way. So, Conduit, what do you want to do? Um, I think I would want to try to get them back down to the, the ground before you we move. You can fly, up. and none of them are all that hard to um, lift. They're all pretty, pretty small. So... Three of you could definitely fly them somewhere other than here if you wanted to and be back pretty quick. Yeah, that's what I would want to do. Get them out of okay. here first. Well, they appreciate that. They don't want to go off into the swamp without you for fear there might be kobolds around. Um, can they wait somewhere and you retrieve them on your way out? Sure. Okay. They're amiable to that. Uh, they wish you the best of luck in whatever your endeavors take, and they hope they see you again. They don't want to have to make that trip alone. Okay, then back up in the loft area. Um, tactician, what do you want to do? Uh, I guess search around. Okay. Make a uh, reason mm, notice check. Anyone else wants to search around, also make a reason notice test. Yes, mine was not good. You got a seven for tactician. The talent got an 11. I'll search around the aviary. Fury got a 10. Okay. Uh, the 11 is the best you guys got. Uh, looks like with the 11, you find, well, the the chest is empty, but with an 11, you notice that it's got a false bottom. And underneath the false bottom, you guys locate five potions of healing. Nice. Potions of healing, basically, they're a golden potion that tastes of honey when you drink them. It's a maneuver to drink a potion or maneuver to administer a potion. And you regain your healing value when you drink one, but you don't spend to recover. So we'll assume each are carrying one of those for now, I assume, since there's five of them. You also find that bag of corn is a bag of Everfeed. It's filled with corn kernels. It's always full, no matter how much corn you remove. And you can dump it out, and it dispenses 10 pounds of corn at every round. And then the notebook is the last thing you find here. It claims to be the notes of an inventor named Talia, who was in charge of the tower long ago, uh, just after it was first constructed. It contains schematics and drawings of many different devices, including the clock tower itself and magical jetpacks. The notebook also contains a description of a mechanical suit of armor that is powered by lightning and equipped with weapons, rockets for flight, and self-destruct system. The pages after the description, though, which would have held the machine's schematics, have been torn out. I think we'll find that upstairs. Mm -hmm. That is all you find in your guys' search. So you're at four victories. Make sure you have four victories on your uh, character by hitting the Alt button and double-clicking your token. Set your victories to four, and then what do you want to do next? Remember, you can all fly, so you're not much restrained where you can go now. So, Tom, I don't know what happened, but I can't change my victories. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you might have to reload the game. Yeah, oh, I can't yeah. change them either, but that's uh, individual. I'm going to just reload real quick, too, and it generally fixes it right away. If that has happened. If you still can't get it after reloading, let me know and I'll see if I can do it. I'm only seeing four yep, of you there. I wonder where your other person went. I'm trying to move myself over. Shadow. I see you. I'll put you over there. Okay, so now you guys are gathered in the loft. You've searched the place, you're trying to figure out what you want to do next. So what do you want to do next? I do want to go on the roof. Okay, I fly, think, out, yeah. fly out that open window? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Everyone good at their health where they're at? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fly out the open window. And indeed, you can hear some high-pitched voices up above. So if you fly straight up, maybe about another 25 feet or so, you might find what's happening. A storm is brewing outside. Lightning's flashing in the distance. So, you want to fly up to the voices? Let's do yep. it. Me. Okay. Yeah, I got a lightning rod with me. Very good. Set up uh, like the arrangement you want to be in as you fly up. Basically, you're just going to be flying straight up, and you'll be crossing the roof. Basically, this line will make the roof line. So set your guy where you want to be, and then I'll move you over to the map. Higher level map. You should all be at four victories. Okay. Rain is starting to fall. Lightning striking around you. You crest the roof to see a walkway, basically, at the 150-foot uh, level that goes around this, the crest of the roof. Then it slopes up another 10 feet or so to the pinnacle, and... Up there, you see little lizard people wearing cylindrical metal backpacks stand around the roof, surrounding a 10-foot-tall suit of mechanical armor that holds a grinning uh, bronze-scale lizard person wearing goggles. So where, where that grill is and the chest of that armor, that is where the kobold is. The kobold leader is inside that chest grill. Lightning cracks down from the stormy sky, striking a long iron rod sticking out the back of the mechanical armor. As the armor whirs to life, the goggled figure inside cackles, screaming, Finally! Now let's gather the others and lay waste to Sealton Heath. That's where you came from. The backpack-wearing figures chant, Octavia! 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 Into the stormy sky. And attack. And so let's see who goes first here. Initiative 2. That's going to be them first. So I'm going to have Octavia go first. Octavia will go ahead and do a missile barrage. One, six, seven, eight, mm. Ten... Octavia will move first there. Do a missile barrage. This is going to hit, I think, all five of you. Check here. No, three creatures. So the three closest creatures are going to be hit for 15 points of damage. Um, any of your triggered things that block damage, block the damage on one target. Uh, so if you want to do any triggers, now's the time. 15 points of damage. Yeah, I will parry that on myself. So one of the other two people, I'm going to block eight. Tactician was parried. Uh, the rogue teleported, so probably the fury. Uh, you're blocked data. Yep. Okay. It's a barrage. Let's see. That was his action and or her action. And are you teleporting there, Shadow? Is that what you did? Uh, yeah. Um, speed. Speed up six. Octavia fires her thrusters, moves to here, and like vectors the thrusters towards you as she comes to a stop. Uh, each enemy who is adjacent to her during the move takes five fire damage, so five fire damage shadow. That's her maneuver. And she did the missile barrage, so she is done. Then we got a bunch of you want to go next. So fight it out, Fury, Shadow, and Conduit. Uh, I, I, I want to go next because I don't want... I want to go before people are next to... Um, yeah, go for it. I can wait. I can... Okay, Shadow, go for it. All right, so I'm just going to do... I work better alone. That is... Uh, She's going to do a trigger as soon as you do the attack on her. Uh, shields up. Creatures in 10 attack you. Magical effect. Reduce the damage by 5. So it's going to do 12. Uh, 7. 7 damage. And knock the attacker prone. 11 might resist that. Oh, and I I get 4 more damage to her. Because you're working better alone. Yes, and i got to make a might. Roll. Yeah, 11 might to resist. Um, seems unlikely. Yeah, you're at 6 now. So you pull up. Okay, so knock yourself prone. Prone. Yep. And was so far all you've done so far is make one attack, so you still have your maneuver. All right, so I guess I will use my um, black ash teleport. And when you teleport yeah. yourself, you can change to being standing. Oh yeah, I, that, I remember that. Uh, yeah, so that's what I will do. Okay, and that's that. Okay, then Octavia will go again. Wait, the uh, kobolds will go. The minions. They're going to swarm around the shadow. So, speed of six. So, one, two, Ugio Puncture, one point of damage. Three. That's it for that one. Then this one's going to go the same and do another puncture. Uh, two damage. That one's good. And there, and these three will all throw their Pugios at you, which has got a range of five. Three damage on the first one. These are all in the shadow. Four damage. And four damage. Ouch. They are done. Next to go. Looks like Conduit or Fury. Uh, do you mind if I go next to try to help the shadow out? Go right ahead. Hey, All right. 
I am going to fly one, two, three, six to there. And I'm going to uh, the uh, Blessed Light, the one directly south of the shadow. That's going to be 10. Drops him, him, and him. All right. And I get uh, two virtues. And I'm going to do uh, Healing Grace to give both of those virtues to do two recoveries. Shadow can do two recoveries. All right. You got to spend your recoveries, but you get two times your healing back. And after you will come these guys. Okay, this lead there is going to charge forward one there, and he will do a body of stab on the tactician. Ten points of damage, tactician, and unless you reduce that to zero, he taunts you as well. I know I already parried, so okay. Only seven. You attack back seven, and then Fury, your turn. Um, I gotta protect. Okay, I will. Uh, I will roll my thing first. Uh, gets me to five, which is not a boon. I will use half my no. I will one, two, three over here, and I will strike with the mighty on the bubble. All these turn with an extra boon. Uh, doing eighteen plus two, twenty points of damage. All right, after the fury, we'll do this guy. So gonna move over one, two, three, and strike the Fury with a Gladius Stab. Fifteen points of damage, Fury. And that's a right, critical. Thank you. I don't know if monsters get critical. I wouldn't say he does. Uh he taunts you as well. And then his critical attack is fourteen more damage. Wow. Now, tactician, your turn. Uh okay. Uh maneuver, take a potion, healing twenty. Uh oh, I'm taunted, so I guess I'll attack. A positioning strike guy next to me. Got your west took a uh, left. And somebody needs ten squares. I got to measure something real quick. Yeah, the shadow can move uh, if they would like. Shift three. Anything else, tactician? Uh, that's it. That's all. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll taunt the guy uh, that I just attacked. Okay. Then after the tactician, it's going to be uh, let's see, someone else on them. I'm going to do this guy. He is going to go ahead and do. Let's see here. There, he'll step to there. And he'll bury the point on Shadow. 12 points of damage, Shadow. And a 10 agility or 4 ongoing. No problem. No problem. Then he's going to come to 1, 2, okay. Then Talon. Um, did you say all of the Kobolds have these back get pack things yes, on? Yes, that is correct. Mm-hmm. So throwing them off the roof probably won't help. They're not flying them at the moment, though, right? They're just running? They're flying. Yeah, they're all flying. Or they are flying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, pushing them around is not going to be a great help. Um, I am going to use my Dagger of the Mind. Um, these guys are the clockwork. Little clockwork guys, are they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do it on... This one, this one, and this one. Okay. You rolled a two, so you gain one strain, and I got some resistance. That guy bails it, and it's dazed. At the end of your next turn, it's two guys. Ooh, one made it, bailed it. This guy down here by the tactician is dazed. Okay, anything else, Talent? Okay. Octavia is going to take Oh, he needs s- to move? Yeah. No. You all done, Talent? Yeah, unless someone wants to move somewhere. Okay, uh, she is, nope. is going to go ahead and do her armor punch. She's got to reach a two so she can hit the barbarian from here. That's going to do seven damage to you, barbarian. Oops. You are grappled by her. That is her attack. And then she's going to go ahead and do away with you. Costs uh, four grappled creature, weighs five or less. Uh, she will be cool. throw you basically off the roof, but you're able to fly, so... That doesn't affect you too bad. And then that's it for her. That's it for the round. They'll go next round first. You guys can start thinking about when you want to go. First, the taunted guy is going to go, who's west of the tactician. Back in the tactician, who's taunted by, with his uh, gladius stab to keep up the taunting going. 14 to hit you, tactician. Carrying that. This is the start of a new round, so everyone can take off your your, uh, um, reaction. I'll spend a whatever. Okay, 
Uh, that's it for him. And then it looks like we got Conduit or Shadow. Go, oh, Josh. All okay, right. Okay, Josh. I am going to um, Blessed uh, Light, the one directly to the west of the Tactician, for 10. Yeah, got it. And then I will Healing Grace the Fury uh, with one Virtue, so you get to do one recovery. And I will give you an extra, I'll use my re, uh, reaction to do my healing, extra healing. So you get uh, an extra, we have four victories, so an extra four points of healing. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, now she's going to go Tavia. She's going to use um, healing beam, distance of 10. You and allies, she regains 25 hit points. And her allies regain 10 hit points if they're within range. This one is. Those two don't. That's uh, an action. And then she's got moving. Uh, she'll rocket fire over to here, doing five damage to the shadow. And that is it for her. Then, shadow, your turn. Well, shadow has uh, spotted weaknesses in her armor and will stab at one with the assassinate ability. Nice, right, 26. Oh, points. I'm going to. Oh, shoot, sorry. Uh, I don't know if that makes a difference. I was trying to get that clicked. No, you can. So 28 points of damage to the armor. Uh, the kobold's going to throw the shields up, which is going to reduce the damage by 5, and you need to make an 11 might or be knocked prone. That is not going to oh. happen. And then finish your turn. Oh, how much did you fail? Um, did you fail by uh, 4 or less? I, I haven't... Uh, you, yeah, it was an 11 might. I'm going to use my um, VP resist to... Add four victories to the result of the resistance roll. Very good. So you're not prone. And finish your turn. All right. So I am going to uh, teleport with the black ash teleport and zap over here four squares. All right. Then uh, do a legionnaire. Three squares. Tactician. Yeah. This legionnaire is going to fly over to the conduit there and go ahead and do a gladius stab. Nine points damage. And you're taunted. Yeah end of the next turn, which the condition for taunt is too bane to attack. Anyone but him can't willingly move away from the taunter and have when you have line of effect. Okay, so that, that is done. Fury, your turn. Alright, guys. I'm just going to clean up the, uh, or help out the uh, tactician so we can get the bad guy, or the boss. So I'll move over here and then charge in with my devastating rush to do 15 Kill them. Nicely yeah. done. 15 points of damage. All right. Um, that was Fury. That legionnaire's dead. Uh, we're going to do this guy here. Next turn. He's going to try... So, yeah? Yeah, I'm just going to use my, my healing. the uh, My once per encounter healing. Oh, go for it. He is going to go to use Long Spear Little Arms on the tactician. Um, doing six points of damage to you in shift two. And he's done. And then next is the tactician. Um, okay. So... I'm still taunted, right, by the... No, when the taunted the... one goes away, we'll say it ends. Because okay. the taunted one is dead. Oh, right. I'll move up here and uh, spend five focus to do a hammer and anvil. Okay. Um, Ooh, all right. 16 damage. And uh, I think the fury can hit the same guy over where he's at. Yeah, the fury's yeah. mighty strike has got a range of four, so he can. So Fury, you can make a basic attack against that same target. And Mighty Strike is your basic attack. Oh. Uh, 17, 18, 19 uh, from the spear. 19. Nice. Nice combo. Uh, uh, no, no, actually 22. Because I am at 6, so I get the raging? one boom. Yeah. Get another 4. Got it. Barely hanging on. Okay, that was Velas. That was the Tactician. Town's coming up next, but we got these... Uh, Minion kobolds are going to go next and shoot these guys. So they're going to go. Uh, they're both going to hurl their Bugios at the tactician. First one is four damage. Second one is one damage. So five damage tactician. Then talent, your turn. Um, I'm going to do an energy siphon on big suit. Go for it. Six damage, it looks like. That was good. And the next attack for you is damage boost by three. Do you want to move anywhere? To move where you want. Uh, this guy's gonna go next. Yeah. No, I'm okay. <laughs> All right. He's going to go ahead and do an armor punch on the dwarf. 15 points damage to the tactician and grapples you. 
and then he'll do away with you and toss you four. He'll toss you there and smash you into the barbarian, so you both take two damage, striking him, and done. And that's the end of the round. I forgot four, four extra damage because of my victories. Okay, I'll just hold it till your next attack and remember it your next one. Okay, next round. We got, you want to go? And you want to go? They're going to go, and I'll let Octavia go first. Just a five. Okay, Octavia's going to go. One, two, four. Okay. Tavi goes to there with a maneuver, and then Octavia does targeting beam. The uh, suits seem to come up to full speed now, and beams shoot out all directions to a distance of five squares from her. And I don't count as one, so it'll be all of you. You all take eight points of damage, and you all glow and grant two boons until the end of the encounter, or Octavia is defeated. Eleven agility resists that. Oh. So, talent, you can reduce that damage on one target. That's going to be... be me. Okay. Oh, unless someone's really, really damaged. Yes. So, what does resi resist do again? It's a it's a test. You need to get an 11 agility test. To resist. And I did that. Okay. And so what is that? No effect. You are so not glowing. You take damage, oh, okay. you're not glowing. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so tactician... Okay. I, I, I reduce it on... Who is this? That's the tactician. So, Tactician, you're going to take okay. damage uh, lessened by 7. So that 8's dropped down to 1 for you. Okay, now saving throws. Tactician, you failed it, right? So if you failed it, put a purple dot on you just like the Tactician did. Conduit made it. Shadow made it. Fury. Oh. So you failed it, so you got a purple dot. And Talent, go to make an agility test. You made it. But the, oh, wait. Was it 11? It's an 11. Eight. So you put a purple dot on you. So all three of you are granting 2 boons to every attack against you, because you are glowing. And that does not end until the counter ends or Octavia is defeated. That's Octavia's turn, and looks like anyone, want, anyone wants to go next, so Shadow, go ahead. Okay, well, I just noticed that all my uh, attacks have a range of four. Nice. How did I not notice that? <laughs> um, so, uh, there are no allies next to Octavia. That's correct. That means I am going to I work better alone strike. Hmm, 17 damage, nice. Uh, this is the start of a round, and I didn't use the shields up yet. I have a mark. Uh, so shields up on you. Um, so the damage is going to be 12 instead of 17, and you might get knocked down. 11 might resist. Almost certainly I won't get knocked down, but I'll get up again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else, Shadow? That's it. Okay, now... Oh, well, have... actually, I'll go ahead and I haven't maneuvered, so I'll go ahead and teleport and pick myself up. I have this guy go next. Ellis. I think that day is to end, right? Gone since then. Practition, do you know if that day should be gone on that guy? I mean, talent. I didn't daze anybody. Okay. All right. Uh, it'll come down there. Do long spear little arms on the tactician with two. Boom. Do the targeting. Seven, eleven, twelve. Fifteen damage. Carry that. Uh, so seven, I'll use my one thing, so I'll take one. All right. That was Shadow Velas, uh, Tactician, go ahead. Um, I will do a recovery, and then, um, I'll just back up a little. I'll move, and that's it. Okay. Next to go, I'll have Octavia take Octavia's second turn. Tactician, she will move to there, and then do, uh, Cutting Beam. This is like a laser beam sweeps across the two of you. Um, it's a cube three within one of her. It's going to get the shadow and the tactician. It's going to do 15 points of damage. Plus you both have two boons. So 20 points of damage to both of you. Wait, to who? Yeah, I think you meant the fury. The fury and the tactician, not the shadow. Yeah. 20 points to the fury, 20 points to the tactician. It's her cutting beam. That's the first time she used that. And she also maneuvered, so she's done. And next to go after her is going to be the Fury. All right, I'll move up here. Um, let me roll and see if I get a four. If I get a four, I'm going to spend that with the Whirlwind. Um, so that does to Octavia and her companion does 14, 17, 19. I will add my once per encounter four victory damage to make it 23 points of damage. Um... 
And then I will stand there and take it. Okay, Legionary is going to go next. Um, he can shift, shift. He'll take the uh, chance attack from the conduit. All right. Six damage. Six, okay. He'll stab at the, sh the Fury. Eight points damage, Fury. Oh, well, actually, eight, nine, ten, eleven points damage, Fury. Uh, I'm going to, if he's uh, attacking back, um, he didn't say that out loud, but he clicked on it. I'm going to. Um, is that something that you could do? Hold. Oh, no, it's actually no not an attack, and surprisingly, okay. it doesn't have the attack right. keyword. So if you're relying on that, if, it, if you're yeah. just relying on him doing damage, you could affect him. No, it was the uh, it was a boon. Okay. Uh, okay. Fury, how much damage? I'm frustrated with myself. Only five. Five. Got it. Yeah. Did that. Uh, you are taunted by him, and uh, next to go is conduit. Uh, did you say these guys are flying? Yes, they are. They do. All right. Um, I am going to uh, blessing light the uh, Olivia. Okay. So that's going to be thirteen damage, and she's glowing. Octavia, you mean? Yeah. Thirteen. The, the giant robot. The giant robot took thirteen, and is granting one boon on the next attack. Okay. And, that was and then I'm going to use my uh, healing grace on the tactician. Thank you. Um, so you get one recovery. All right. The two mechanical kobolds zoom in to attack the fury, stabbing at them as they go. Two points damage with one, two points damage with the other one. So I think done for that, unless your rage is not high enough. And did, did anyone not go? We got everyone, right? Yeah, I goofed up and didn't use my. I meant to. I was waiting on the fury to go, and then I got distracted and didn't do my freaking. Did I? Did I go? Talent? Did you not go talent? I don't think the talent went. No. Oh, go for it. No. Um, yeah. So I'm going to do. Awesome. I am. Can I? Can I? Like slam them into the roof or? Uh, yeah, you can smash them down to the ground. Yeah. The Is he making an attack? I don't know if he's making an attack, but I want to make sure I get it in before <laughs> you start making announcements and miss my shot again. Your big goes so too fast. So, okay. okay. Thanks again. On the big guy? And, yeah, and I'm going to give six, seven, her eight, ten, my twelve. extra four damage. So and 16. I Yeah, I, get, I have a boon, and he was already granting a boon. Just Got so, it. 16 so damage. Boons. And, oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's, um, tossing can change elevation. Sliding can't change elevation. But you can slide her oh, into. You slide. Yeah, you can slide her into one of the kobolds if you want to, and smash her into that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, which one? The one to her west, or the one to her south? West. There. Okay, smash her into that. Kill him. And she'll take uh, it's a three. Actually, you only end up getting to slide her one because she's anchored. But that's enough to kill that kobold. And she'll take one damage. Yep. Okay. Um, into that round. Then, next round, she'll go first again. She will do an armor punch on the Fury for 16 damage, Fury. So much? 16? No, no, I already said thank you. You gonna do anything about that after that hit? Is that restart? Do I strike back? Yes, we're gonna stop. We just no. start a new round, yeah. So everything restarted. Okay. okay. Strike so back. I'll just do seven? Seven, okay. And seven damage is shielded. Hear that, Fury? Seven damage was shielded. Then she's going to go ahead and do away with you. Away with you. Grab uh, toss four. She'll so throw you into the dwarf. So you both take three damage as you, she impacts you on the dwarf. Uh, Tactician and Fury will take three. So Fury, if you have immunity three, you take none from that. That is her turn. Roger. Then it looks like the conduit's ready. Go ahead, conduit. All right. I'm going to uh, Blessed Light her, and that's going to be ten. And then Fury, you can use a recovery. Nice. All right, then she's going to go again. Because things are looking grim all of a sudden. After the conduit. And she'll do... She'll do rocket fire. And... Let's see. So she moves there with rocket fire. So it's going to do um, five fire damage to the Fury. And then she's going to use her second cutting beam to attack the Fury and the Tactician. And you both take 13 damage from that. I will parry that. And then Tactician, your turn. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to get my. I, I, was, I, I think I was a two. I don't even see yeah. you in there, Fury. You're saying you're two in the initiative. There you go. Okay, go for it, Fury. All right, I'm clicking this now so I don't screw it up. And like Fury, did you take your damage? You took um, the cutting beam damage. Can you guys hear me now? 
Yep. So you got hit by the cutting beam. Do you take that damage? Yep. Okay. Your turn. All right. Um, I can do it from right here. All right. Let's roll and see. We're going on edge here. Okay. It's four. So I think it's made to 10. I'm going to spend six rage and do weakening strike with the Oh, six. crap. Um, I didn't do the extra damage. So you both took six extra damage from her cutting beam because you're both purple. But you're both still alive. So go ahead. Do the six damage and then do your thing. All right. We can strike so on did, the big one. Wow, 21 so points of damage. Did, 22, 23, 24, 25. 26, 27 because of the spear? Yeah. Anything from, from raging? Um, no, because it drops me below 6. Okay, nice damage. And we get... Oh, and you rolled an 11. That's a crit. So yeah, and you got both boons. The boon she was granting, the boon I was granting. Correct. Yeah, I got both of those. And you get an extra action. And weakened her, unless she makes an endurance check to resist... Endurance 5, 6, 7, which she does not, so she's weakened. And Fury, your second um, action. Okay. Uh, and then I will, for shits and giggles, I will do the Whirlwind and spend the rest of my Rage. Nice. All right. Oh, you take her for... down, and she explodes in a burst 2, doing 9 fire damage to everything in burst 2. Um, and there's no resistance to that. It's just 9 fire. Getting her ally as well. Boom, incinerated. Yay. And a fireball tumbles down the tower, and you can see it falling down toward the marsh. The kobolds look in awe and try to flee. You can probably capture the living one, no problem, and take him back into custody. And you are victorious over the kobolds. Yay. So, um, in the end, let's see, you have the bag, the real spear, the um, you get a whole bunch of jetpacks, and that's all the different types of treasure that you guys got. That the conclusion, Lady Rana hails you as heroes upon your return to Sealton Heath. She offers to let you keep the clock tower as your permanent residence, hoping that the presence of heroes prevents any other opportunists from trying to take control of Talia's work. And that is the end. Yeah, so, that was fun. I, I like that. Have you ever played? I didn't go down a single time. I'd like to note that. Of any time we've ever played, this is the only time I haven't gone down except for a candle keep one. <laughs> have you ever played fourth edition, Ariel? No, I, I haven't. No. This is this was pretty fun. What do you think, Dave and and Josh? How did it compare to four E? Uh I just I don't remember four E. I, I don't see the So when I when I played fourth edition, what I the thing that stuck out the most about me is it felt like a um it felt like a, a MMORPG. It felt like a World of Warcraft or yeah. Star Wars: The Old Republic, um, and this I don't think felt that strongly like that. It's it, a totally it, different action economy or resource management, right? In fourth yeah. edition, you had your dailies that you'd Nova right away, and then you'd be boring the rest of the day. Whereas right. this, you get more and more powerful as the day goes on. I I think the victory point part of it is super interesting. Yeah, I, I really like that. It incentivizes to keep going, right? Yeah. Because it resets at the end of the day. If you rest, it resets. Um, and those victories are your experience points, right? Yeah. All your victories turn into experience points. Yeah. yeah. So the, this would also be another victory. So you would add five victories, gain five experience. I don't know if it's like 10 for every level or more. I don't think they've decided on that yet. Have and the auto hitting is another really interesting mechanic. It's uh, it's different. Did you Did you miss it? Did you do you ever think? Oh man, I wish I could roll for that first before I do it. No, <laughs> no. Um, I I'll be well. It, so that's the thing about auto hitting. For the person who's wanting to hit, it's wonderful. For the person who's getting hit, less it's bad. so. Yeah. Um, so you know, I think about my conduit. I don't have like unlike the others. I don't have anything that reduces damage. Um, so I will I will say this is the one bad thing about the conduit. The, the conduit's fun. I liked it. But uh, the only way, like the conduit is, you got to stay away from the damage because you can't reduce it. There's no, I don't have a way to effectively heal myself um, at, at, or as effectively heal myself. Um, so it's since, you know, like with the, you know, in D&D with like a life priest, right? You could have a, a decent armor class to try to keep you going while you heal your companions. With this, you just got to try to stay away from the, the fighting is what it felt like. Yeah. So I, th I think that might be a bit of a criticism on that. Mm hmm. Um, 
but no, it was, it was, it was interesting. I, I, I had fun. So that's, you know, obviously a big part of it. Mm -hmm. It uh, definitely takes a lot of uh, paying attention, doesn't it? It does. You can't yeah. really just zone out in this game. <laughs> oh, it's my turn. No, it's now good. I'll think about what I'm doing. You know, no doing any voices while no. you're playing. No, because the uh, triggers are like super powerful. Yeah, the secret is to use your daily, like to use your limited triggers at the beginning of the encounter, mm -hmm. so then you don't have to worry as much about it. After that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you have so many <laughs> triggers that they're like taking off half the damage you're taking, generally. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, what I really like about it, it was a lot about like the Shadow Dark 2, is it is at a portion and for some percentage similar to what our normal campaigns are, but different enough that it breathes a, breathes a little life into what we do. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of a, you know, each campaign does that too, but here the mechanics I feel does a very similar thing. It does, it kind of makes it exciting for a little bit. It's like a first date, you know, and then when the honeymoon phase, you know, come, you know, wears off, then we can move on to something else. So I, I like, because it's a different mechanism, it's a different thought process. I think that has an appeal to me as well. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out because they got like a year of development ahead of them. What's like the one thing you'd want them to change? Good. Is there anything that stood out in that way? Like, oh, I hated that. Oh, not that I can. If this is good, having a way for every character, if since it's auto hitting, having a way for every character class to reduce damage would be the thing I would recommend. Would would be the thing I change. So. I, I don't think I don't think it is fun to have any any class that is auto hit and no way to reduce damage. I I, I would say every class needs to have a way to reduce damage. That that would be the thing I would change. I'd forgotten this about fourth edition and and I don't know if there's any possible way to reduce this, uh, but it's it's it can get really hard to visualize the fights with all these abilities you know what kind of what yours look like and what they do but everybody else not necessarily know what's going on when, when they say yeah what they do that. like the one i thought yeah. was the assassinate from three or four squares away it's like well how is that working are you shooting an arrow what's right and and i all, all it says is weapon so i i guess you make yeah it up. the weapons Maybe are you're... pretty abstract for sure. Yeah. So, the gear for the shadow, they have light armor, daggers. So they're throwing daggers. I guess they're, they're throwing daggers. Their yeah. Thing, yeah. The uh, the conduit, I think, doesn't even have a weapon. Medium armor, no. tome. It's got a tome. You can smash people over the head with this tome. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really sure what my uh, pants like reaction attack was. I, I'm assuming that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be something magical. Um, yeah. For you, in theory, right? Yep. And, uh, yeah, the gear for the talent is a supernatural ward and an orb. And then the Fury's got throwing axes. I think that's why it's got reach. The whole, the whole idea of the equipment being so abstract is interesting in one way, but weird in the other. It's like, it doesn't matter what you attack with, you do the same damage. But in theory, some equipment could change your range, right? The kits can change your range. But what if you pick up an item independent of a kit that is a longbow, for example? It'd be interesting to see how they handle that. Yeah. I kind of like damage being independent of your weapons. I mean, you know, your shadow attacking with a dagger doing just as good as a barbarian attacking with a great axe because you're so much better with a dagger. Right. But a barbarian well, can pick D &D, up your dagger and do just as much damage too, so... As D&D's evolved, the weapons have meant less and less. You yeah. Know, that's it used to be kind of a big deal what you what weapon you had but now not so much it's good i don't necessarily i i there, there's i i feel like if you have a flavor idea for your character that being punished for not by having a less you know does that make sense like yeah absolutely um, and that's exactly what they're trying to do right it's like yeah no you just you just worry about kind of the flavor like you're saying what do you look like but you shouldn't have to pick up a great axe just because it does to one extra point of damage on average than a longsword. Right. right. Or a dagger. I mean, you stab someone in the right place with a dagger and it's going to be ugly fast. So, I kind of, I kind of like it. I doubt it's going to replace d d for me. But No, no, I, I still will always like d and I think. 
it's going to be really hard to find a game I like better than D&D. I kind of would like it if D&D kind of pared down its action economy, which it won't do in the next edition. You know, if it was just attack action and that went, found a way to make that really go fast. What do you guys think of the initiative system? It's okay. I don't, I, I kind of like that you can, different people can go at different times, you know, mm-hmm. whoever thinks, hey, I need to go now so I can, you know, get this off before something else happens. It's definitely you something you could port into any game, but D and D, it can be really optimized for the party to always be going multiple characters before any of the monsters go. Yeah, that's a big plus that yeah. it gets woven together. But there needs, I think you're on the right track with the um, with the numbers. Maybe that could use some refinement, but some yeah. sort of some way to flag mechanism. the DM. If you're at a table, you know you'd probably just have a flag that says, "Hey, I'm ready to go." Right. Or, or if you're at a table, you'd be talking with each other. Hey, you know, let's, you go next, and then you go next. Like yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it'd be easier at a table in a real life table than over there in that I think. But at least this way, I can see which of you think they want to go first. Now, Josh yeah. always wants to go first, so I should just ignore when he has a two there. <laughs> no, it's well, useful yeah. when he's the healer for him yeah, to go first. Yeah, it does make sense. I, what I would do at the start. Top of the round, I would see if anybody was looking pretty bad. They'd be like, "Well, I better go first before they get killed before I go." Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah, and that is a benefit. I mean, that's you know, sometimes in D and D, you know, like, like, oh my god, I got to heal him, and it's like, oh, too late. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It also makes it much easier for the big bad enemies to get off their special powers because only one character is ever going to go before them. You know, if the worst monster you got to fight, the worst initiative they can do is go second. Yeah. All right. And in the case of this one, who could go twice, they could go second and fourth. It'd be the worst it could get for them. Well, Tom, thanks. This was fun and uh, enlightening. All right. And, um, and I will talk to you guys all later. All right. Have a good night. Good night, everyone.